Welcome everybody to the seventh stop of the Petros and Money Virtual Chevy Summer Tour. We got a Western theme. You might think it's kind of hot to be standing in the back of a truck in Burbank in a flannel and jeans and a big stupid hat. It is. Ten. Nine. Eight. Seven. Six. Five. Four. Welcome to the Petros and Money Virtual Chevy Summer Tour. Brought to you by Chevy. Find new roads. Here is Petros Papadakis and Matt Money Smith. Squat with your spurs on. <laughs> Get out, big. That's Rose and Money, AM570 LA Sports is here. The seventh stop of the Petros and Money Chevy Virtual Summer Tour. Tell them what they can win if you're watching right now on Facebook. Unbelievable. And or YouTube, the Virtual Chevy Summer Tour is today. Starting today. right now all the way till... The Morongo pregame show on this station at 5.30. Dodgers taking on the Giants tonight, but up until that moment, Matt, you and I on YouTube, Facebook, Don McClain on the Zoom talking hoops because we got a Clipper game tonight on the Patriot tonight. that tips at 6. But we're going to ride people out with prizes in a Western Stilo. Get over there immediately. The prizes begin to be distributed in the very first commercial break, which is just minutes away. YouTube.com, Facebook.com. You type AM570 LA Sports into the search bar, and that takes you to our live virtual feed. A two-camera shoot with a three-man crew, Ricky, Eric, and Social Matt, guiding us along this path until 5.30 p.m. Come over here in front yeah, of the camera. It. You got to see Colin. Come get stand. to YouTube right now You guys so you know can Colin. Colin. Colin Yee. Yeah, you guys know. Colin. There's Colin Yee from the uh, the Dodgers fame and, and, of course, PMS intern fame and Alhambra Moore. Well, his dad's an Alhambra Moore. And uh, Colin Yee, very festive with the hat, and he'll be answering the phone. The Christian Cowboy is man in your calls. Well, Jesus. 866-987-2570. Jesus loves the range. Damn right he does. That's why they call it God's country for a reason, you know, Matt. I mean, and look, that was still sand he was walking on out there. 
We've got a great deal of stuff to give away. Indeed we do. And we want you to watch, not listen. We want you to watch and listen on the Petros and Money Show on AM570. I'm going headphoneless. I got to wear the cowboy hat. I'm going without headphones. Sans headphones. So Kate, just do what I did last week, man. I mean, I've got a lot of run out of this Stetson here. Yeah, uh, that's my friend's father-in-law's, who's got a big bucket head. God bless him, Ryan Wagoner's father-in-law. That thing, I've gotten a run out of two different PMS tour stops, but I can't wear it with it the headphones. It goes on in the commercial breaks. It goes on in the breaks, yeah. Matt. I mean, look, if you can do it without the headphones, you look great. I'm going to give it a go. I mean, you look it's great. It's such a damn comfortable hat. It you, really is. You look like you're in thunder from down under, Matt. Yeah. Like you could just take the stage right now and the chicks would go, ooh, <laughs> yeah. You know what? I tried out and I had some baggy jeans on. And then when I had to take my jeans off, we're like, sorry, man, we are. We are not what you're looking for. Did we list every one of these prizes? We haven't listed any of these prizes yet, as a matter of fact. Uh, okay, so we have uh, 10. Come on, Kate. That is so bitch made. We only got two events left, and this is the fifth installment of the Signature Petros and Money Show Vans. And we only got 10 pair to give away today? Come All right, on. 15. That's, let's go. Yeah. 15. Cowboy up. Let's go. Just Cowboy like, up. Just like Beyonce said. You're better than that. I'm not going to compromise my Christianity. You're better than that. Wasn't that the Kevin Millar Boston Red Sox World Series cry? Cowboy up. That's right. That's right. Save a horse. Ride a cowboy. Ride Kate's. Exactly right. Uh, we got a $1,000 gift card to Barbecues Galore to give away like we have every single tour stop. So we've given away $6,000 worth of Barbecues Galore cred. This will be 7000 by my count. I'm no math major. <laughs> But thank you, Henrik and Barbecue Galore. We love you. And uh, Westinghouse has been a great partner over the years, Matt, when it comes to giveaways. Football season is upon us. You want to watch it on a big screen TV. A lot of people prefer that to actually attending in person. <laughs> you can't attend in person even if you wanted to do this year. Yay. But you can get yourself a brand new TV. And 20, that would be a 50 inch Westinghouse Roku HD TV. I don't care. I'm going to Kansas City. I'm going to go see an NFL game in person. I'm going to go to Miami. Miami's like I'm going to go to Jacksonville. Let's go. Uh, we're going to give away another TV. And by the way, little wrinkle, easy to do the math for the barbecues galore. But there was one event we gave away two TVs. So this is number eight. Wow. That we're giving away today. Chef Marito prize pack with a $100 gift card. Thank you, Chef Marito. Oh, we love you, Chef Marito, and that spice basket of yours. A Philippe's family pack. Speaking of a basket of fun. And a Sweet James prize pack, which is a bag of shells. Or a bag of buttons. Or a bag of... Jack, bag of chapstick. Or a bag of... Bag of glass. Or a bag of glass. Thank you to all our great sponsors. Chevy, Azusa Pacific University, Sweet James will be along a little later this hour. Barbecues galore, because it's not just a barbecue aisle. That would be a barbecue store. And Chef Marito, of course, Vans. 15 off, pair, how about that? Yeah, off the wall since 1966. Vans! You're a pushover, Kate. Dot com. You should have made it 20, though. Because all that's going to happen is next year, when that cart gets wheeled in, there's just going to be another pair of the fifth edition of the Petros and Money van stacked on top of the already 20 pair from years past. I reckon we can get to 20. <laughs> you reckon so? You reckon we can we can do it? You reckon we can get that cattle across the plane? Uh, I reckon you hightail it. Over to the abode of Dave Weiss. See if you can square that away between the two of you. We'll do it out. Over to his casita. <laughs> exactly right. Uh, the West can be a desperate place. You search all day for just a taste of some cold, cold water, Matt. And we do have a lot more than a taste for you kids today. A great Western theme. That's nope, true. Nobody does the West. And for us, the West is like the Inland Empire. Or even like, we'll, we'll take the San Gabriel Valley. Nobody does the West. Like PMS. If your area code starts with an eight or a nine, you're the Wild West as far yeah, as we're Silmar, concerned. Silmar, you're, you're Wild West. You're, you're in. 818-805-909-951. We're 960. Awesome, awesome town. Let's go. You're out there. Let's go. And we love it. Now, all the prizes without being saddle sore from having to take a trip can be yours today. That's right, partner. Kablow! On the Petros and Money Chevy Summer Sheew! Tour. Thousand dollar gift card to barbecues galore. Get them! So you can enhance your chuck wagon and cook your vittles correctly. We also have a giant Westinghouse Roku HD TV so you can watch every gunsmoke rerun ever. Ooh, that's a good call. We should be doing that, not inside training camp. Look, Matt, 
I can only push a theme as hard as I can. You know, I mean, I can only. Rifleman. Let's get uh, the Virginian. You can watch the Virginian as clearly as possible. Oh, the rifleman's on. Here we go, Chuck Connors. On that Westinghouse. Bang. Not to mention the spices of Mexico, which is oh, all over the West. He's wearing it. With Chef Merito. Oh, yeah. We got a man of the law that's taking Chuck, out Hobo. That's Chuck Connors, Matt. That's that's the branded guy, too. Same guy. Uh, Look at that jaw. You can't. I'm so ashamed. <laughs> of my destitute lifestyle. And next, yes. next hour, Matt, we've got one of the meanest... Most straightforward hombres in the West. The old snake killer That's himself. True. Quick draw Don McClain next hour to help us make some sense of the dust-ups <laughs> between the Clippers and the Blazers. I mean, the Clippers and the Mavs and the Lakers and the Blazers down Orlando Bubble Way. That's fair fight. We was legal. That's fair fight. Yeah, we was legal. Check your ear, Creek. Because there will be hot takes and opinions. Hotter than a mare in season. Don't put on the horse races. Don't. I mean, it would be appropriate Not yet. today. It would be appropriate. That's all I'm saying. The Killer of Snakes fits very well with our theme of Western wonder. In fact, did you know that Don McClain has not only had extensive fights with local snakes and coyotes in the Westlake area. Youth baseball, barbecues, and golf. But being from Simi, Simi Valley before the uh, 130, uh, the 118 was built, they called him Cowboy Don McClain when he was slinging all those... Uh, that is the truth. Mid-range. That's the truth. So we will talk to him about that, among other things, next hour. Now, other than living in the West, what do Matt and I understand about the Oeste? Only and, everything. And living a rustic Western life. You might say not much, but then I would counter back. You know how many times I freaking visited Knott's Berry Farm? Not much. Do you know how many times I visited the farm and the ghost town and seen all kinds of Western stuff? What the hell do you two idiots know about the West? I oh, know thanks. all about the West. Thanks for playing along, Seinfeld. Exactly. You couldn't, you couldn't uh, dress in a Western theme for us? I mean, you're from Oklahoma. Exactly. Born and raised. No, I'm not. <laughs> People on the message board are calling Don Martin Quick Draw Martin. Quick Draw Martin? Quick Draw Martin is what you're being called Shoot on the YouTube first. and Facebook feed. Shoot first. Ask questions later. My man, I got to fire you. Listen. What was that? What was that, boss? Hey, slap the dog and spit in the fire. <laughs> Gee, damn it. I know about the Wild West. I grew up in Oklahoma. yippee ki yay Oh, there he is. He's on the camera. Log on to that YouTube.com. Look at those teeth. That's right? the teeth of the West. Look at that hair. That's the hair of the West. Bite a horse right off. <laughs> uh, but, you know, not all of us have the uh, good looks and the Western charm of Don Martin. Some of us have to learn about the West, and uh, that's why we're here. Uh, so, to me, the best way to learn about the West, Matt, other than watching Tombstone every night drunk with a bunch of baseball players for about five years, is the instructional cowboy video on YouTube. Now, we can all go to is from a 1956, very popular on this show, from Walt Disney Productions, right down Riverside Drive here, the, you know, the mouse. The Imaginarium, right there. Uh, where you can a, take a tour. A well, young you used to be able to. In a cartoon, a young cowboy named Johnny uh, dreams of life as a cowboy riding the range, rendered in the flat art style, very modern. Uh, it's pretty much the criteria, as long as I've been alive, as I've understood, for being a cowboy. So we can all follow along today. Now, turn down our Western motif music and bring me... This is... I How mean, to be a cowboy. This is it. Instructional video. How to be a cowboy. Okay. You guys listening? Riding, riding. That's us. We're riding along. What do we need? Oh, a cowboy needs a horse, needs a horse, needs a horse. And he's got to have a rope, have a rope, have I feel like we can get the rope used right And here. he ought to have a song, we need a song. have a song, have a song, if he wants to keep riding. Now a cowboy needs a hat, needs a hat, a hat. needs a hat. And a pair of fancy boots, fancy no boots. boots. Fancy boots and a set of shiny spurs, shiny spurs, shiny spurs. If he wants to keep Gotta stay riding, clear. Like 
You hit a horse with a stapler, he'll move. The fence is long and the sun is hot. And the good Lord knows that a cowboy's got to keep riding, riding along. So he gets himself a horse and a rope and a song. And he finds himself a hat. Fancy boots, shiny spurs, and there's nothing more he needs or can have or can get. Plastic if he house. wants to keep riding. Like there's maybe something missing if you're riding, riding, riding out there in the wide open spaces of the Wild West. And he needs himself a toot. Spurs, <laughs> shiny spurs. <laughs> a toot and a gun and some ammo. Boots, fancy boots. And the chaw. <laughs> and the flash. Big old red man chaw. That's what we forgot. We should be packing a no big old shit. cheek of Shaw right now. Horse, western song, rope, spurs. We did clip out the part that he was fighting off Indians. That's the part I remember. I used to sing along with that all the time. Now, I do have, uh, I got to tell you, Matt, uh, today I went walking. And uh, as I was walking, I walking, as I was out walking, uh, not after midnight. No. no, it was 11 o'clock in the a.m. I was like, you know, I've never been on this canyon before. This one canyon was like a horse area where I live. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to take the canyon. I'm going to take that canyon right now. It's a western I'm gonna theme. See where, yeah, I was like, I'm going to yeah. have my own western adventure. I had my van slip on. Okay. And I went down. Like boots. I went down into the canyon, right? And it started getting kind of gnarly. And I got parched. I, I started I started seeing all this stuff. I didn't have no water. Oh, no. My, I couldn't. I was trying to play the Tennessee Hound Dog Yodel by Marvin Rainwater, but my my Wi-Fi wasn't working, and I was like, "Oh my God, what if happens if I what if I die down here and no one will hear me screaming down in the canyon of death?" That's the Wild West. I made it to the uh, to the stables, and there's a sign that said "Private Property, Get Out." So I turned around and I started going back, mm -hmm. and what did I see? It's a true story. I'm not making this up because it's a western. I mean these. It's like Matt finding the door when we were doing way back Wednesday. I mean, this really happened, and you know I okay, wouldn't make so this up. you turn around. You start making your I way out the away, canyon. I turn away. I'm making my way out of Valmani Canyon Trail. That's what it was these called. these two, you see what? A snake all the way across the trail. With I don't know it was a rattler, and I had my earphones in, so I couldn't hear. And I think it, its tail was kind of in the weeds, but it was long enough to cross a whole trail, which is like three or four feet wide. A big snake. It's a big snake. And I stopped like, oh, God, you know, because I just got my slip ons. You know, I'm not sure. out there with my Doc Martin stomping through the town. And the snake starts doing that thing where its head starts going back and forth. Like, gah, 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 gah. I was like, holy crap. What's it doing? It's ready to attack. I mean, my God. It's going to bite your balls. So I got like, I went on the side of the hill. like, and So I got real skinny. Yeah, I and really did. I got, I got up real there. skinny. And I, and I don't, you know, I even kind of like arched my back. Like I was like, like Shaggy running away from a ghost and I took off. Uh, but then it occurred to me, like where you see like a picture of like a, like a family, you know, like running down by the, by the, by the, by the border, you know, you see those pictures oh, yeah, on the Yeah, yeah, the, the, the warning signs. Right. Yeah, beware of the family and the little girls you know, the like little being girls dragged fly, along in the air. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the doll, uh, is it the same with snakes? Are there like two or three? Because if there was a snake train, I would have went right into the train. Well, because you went, instead of hopping over it. I went around. You went around I couldn't it. hop over it. It's going to bite my balls. Oh, it was it's... doing its wacky head thing. I'm not going to go freaking uh, Jim Thorpe on the thing and try to jump over it. Like it's a cobra or something. It's perched up and it's like. Its head was up. It was stopped dead in the trail. Right and you. it was going. <laughs> and I was like, holy crap. And I called Kate's and I said, you don't know. I can't imagine what happened. You know, and it's a lot Kate like... Kate said, wait there. I'm going to grab my gun. Well... I'm on my way. Remember, last time Kate saw a snake, a harmless snake. He's a coward. He got a uh, shovel a and beat it. No, he had his neighbor bring a shovel and right. beat it to death. Well, his mother-in-law, I believe. The first time he... The, the last... That's right. Are Kate's got his mother-in-law to kill the snake because he is a coward. Kate's is a coward like... Kate's is a coward. Pat Garrett. Just like Pat Garrett. He's Says the guy who ran when he saw a snake today. Okay. Oh, what did all, you want me to do? We're all cowards. Kate. Wait a minute. So wait a make minute. sure you're 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 what, grouped with us. What was I supposed to do? Like Just, have a fist fight with the snake? Say this trail isn't big enough for the both of us? Yes. No. I went around the snake. Look in its eyes. You're supposed to kick it right in the head. 
<laughs> with my with with, with my checkerboards. Yeah, just right in the head. Literally, I was wearing spicolis. Well, what you do is first you insult and say, "What you looking at?" Hey, P? dumb hey, sn dumb what you looking snake. At? Huh? Hey, little bitch. <laughs> you got an effing problem? Hey, if you were a hard ass snake, you wouldn't be here at Palos Verdes, exactly. would you? <laughs> child of privilege. And you kick it right in the face. <laughs> snake, child of privilege. All right. Uh, but I'll tell you what, just like, you know, you watch this uh, football being played and stuff, and it reminds me, you know, you know, like, when you go hard real quick and your heart's beating kind of fast, you might get kind of tired. The rest of my walk was, uh, I was like, whew, man, that really... I dodged that bullet. That, that adrenaline really, uh, really took it out of me. So look, we don't just talk about Western adventure. Live we effing, we effing live it. Live it. On the Petroson Money Show. I saw a snake today. And avoided its attack, even though its head was was going crazy, like a like the snake that Jim Morrison rides when he's on acid. Mark for the coward, shame. What hey, do you do when hey, you see I'm a not, snake? Hey, what do you want me to do? You soil your name. What happened? Well, you know, I didn't want Matt to call me a weenie, <laughs> so what I did was I kind of taunted the snake and jumped around, and then <laughs> and then I got bit, so I got kind of staggered, and it took me about a mile to crawl well, out of the canyon. You walk down that trail. Going and then I called Matt to come and suck out the poison. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll be right down there in my car. I'll suck I'm the coming. poison out. I've done it before. I'm coming. Tal got bitten in the Rockies once. Did Kate say he was going to get his mother-in-law? Kate, there's a snake. Hold on. I don't know what to do. Let me ask mom. Hey, look, I, I think I did the right thing. And the environmentally conscious thing, which was live and let live. And get the hell out of there. That's that, that's that snake's trail as far as I'm concerned. Pete is proud of you. I'm never going back. Pete is proud. What was I supposed to do? Kick the snake? Right in the face. Kick it right in the face. Because <laughs> that's what... Yeah, uh, you're looking at. Let me go enjoy nature. <laughs> F you! <laughs> we'll be right back with more PMS. We're going to be giving... What are we giving away here? A snake carcass? Oh, the Philippe family nice. pack. Headed your way next. Tastes like chicken. Okay, we're on. Uh, YouTube.com, Facebook.com. Thank you for logging on and being part of our virtual summer tour. What are we at right now? Just about 500. Love to get that creeping up over 500 at YouTube. Don't know what it is at Facebook. Have the YouTube open right now. We love the comments. Keep those going, especially the shaming. Uh, I regularly am shamed for being a uh, less than physically imposing coward. Uh, Kate's also regularly shamed for backing away from any confrontation that typically well, I know. I don't know what you wanted me to do with mother the Mother-in-law to come help, and now you have joined the club. Congratulations. Well, it was not my – the snake wasn't at my house. It wasn't Why like you it punch was it? – You could have just, like, punched it right, <laughs> right, right, right there. I would have literally had to snake. lay down on my belly and brought myself down you to the snake's up. level. <laughs> its head was going back and forth. Like a, like a speed bag. I got you squared up there, Mr. Snake. Here we go. Here we go. That's what you get for trying to cross the trail with Bigfoot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Bigfoot Petros is coming. Oh, Bigfoot Bjornsson coming through. Uh, we're giving away a Philippe's family pack. Philippe's is open on Alameda and Ord since 1908. One of the greatest places in the world. And the Bender family is up and running. You can dine outside if you want. You can pick it up. Or if you live far away like many of our viewers do. You thinking about me punching that snake, man? <laughs> oh, Mr. Snake has decided to step into my path. <laughs> nah, we going to have ourselves a little tussle I found, here. You know, I just I found it advantageous to just get out of there. What is our uh, what is our keyword? 866-987-2570. Caller 10 with the keyword. Uh, what do you want to do? Snake boxing. Snake boxing. There we go. Box that snake. Box snake it. Box it. Boxing. Snake boxing is your keyword. 866-987-2570. Caller 10. As long as you say snake boxing, you will win that Philippe's family pack. Four sandwiches. It really happened. Like, I didn't make that up. Certainly it happened. I mean, I, I it, it's Why really, would you, you know, share I a story like that if it I didn't should, you know, The thing happen. when I went down there, I was like, you know what? There's horses. Horses walk this usually, and they're not worried about now, snakes. You, you were wearing shorts, I assume. Yeah, the, the horses got their big ass feet. You know, I'm 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 aware of Lyme disease in that area. Horses do. They freak out. Well, look. I'm, I'm glad. Sorry, how do they go, Kate? <laughs> 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 
You made the right choice. You're here. You're healthy. Well, you I, don't, I just don't know what you would have wanted me to do. And what I if I you. did say on the air, like, yeah, you know what, Matt? I said, I F that. I'll fight that face. F and snake. You know what? I told that snake, F you. I'm not a pussy like right. Cates. I mean, you know what? It, <laughs> well, and then. then what? Then, what? Then, then you reach into your backpack and you pull out that dead snake. I don't have a backpack. Here it is. Like Medusa. Right here. <laughs> Hold up Medusa's exactly. head. Look, I'm sorry, Matt. I just, I thought it was best that I just. And then we get all out turned to stone. Would have been awesome. Well, not unless you don't look at it. All right. Enjoy it. In the shield. Yeehaw. Don't go anywhere. My haiku number seven is coming at you. Hey, yippee I O. I did because you gave. I grew because you sowed. I created. I played. I taught. I climbed, I found Christ, because I saw him reflected in you. Live from the AM570 LA Sports Studios in Burbank, this is Petros and Money. <laughs> yippee tie i oh, get along, little doggies, it's your misfortune and none of my own. Yippee tie I all get along, little doggies. You know Wyoming will be your new home. Yeah! Once you've been to hell and back, there's not much left to fear. When the boogeyman goes to sleep at night, he checks under his bed for me. Have you ever wondered who Waldo's hiding from? Me. Not even the cougars of LA are enough to scare me. But if I get into an accident, I'm calling the boss. Sweet James. If you've been hurt, don't back down. Call Sweet James. From a secret off-site location, possibly in the Far East, possibly in Whittier, this is Vic the Brick Jacobs on the Petros and Money Virtual Chevy Summer Tour. Haiku lovers, a feeling you. This one inspired from the HK Lounge, Upland, PMS Tour Circuit 2017. A little, little ditty written by the Mathis family, Joe and Mary Lou, after they saw Buck Owens sing back up in a Bakersfield band. Back in the day, wrote the song on the way back to LA on the road. Dim lights, a thick smoke, and loud, loud music. It's the only kind of life you'll ever understand a dim light stick smoke and loud loud music you'll never make a wife for a home loving man a home and little children mean nothing to you a house filled with love and a husband that's true you'd rather take a drink with that first guy you meet and the only home you know is that club down the street. yippee i oh ki everybody, I'm feeling you. And back to the Petros and Money Show in our Burbank Studios now. yippee i hey, Everybody, welcome back. The Petros and Money Show is on the air on AM570 LA Sports. But right now, we are in the middle of our seventh of eight Chevy virtual summer tour, which means right at the bottom of the screen here, at the bottom, there's the link to click. Hey, link! And win the Chevy, uh, sign up and win the Chevy, so you will be able to do. But, Matt, we're giving away the signature PMS vans. Next commercial break. We go to break on the radio if you're listening. If you are watching on the YouTube or the Facebook we give you an extra three minutes of content, and in that three minutes... Which we, is really just Matt and I filling time and, and cursing, trying to give stuff away. Cursing and cussing up a storm. Yeah, I shouldn't have said a bad word in Whatever. the last one I did. I'm sorry. So what happens if you get to the YouTube or the Facebook, and then we give you a keyword... I was being called a coward. <laughs> we say it, and then you call, and then you can win. Last commercial break, someone won that Philippe's family pack. This commercial break, five of you are going to win a pair of Petros and Money signature vans. But you can only do it through the video feed at YouTube... Or Facebook, and I have to say, because we weren't quite matched up there with the video and the radio, it's a very 
Mad Dog Russo like rejoin, where you just have music playing oh, just for like then? 45 seconds. Oh, Nobody but, says well, anything. Matt, you're just kind of laying out. Nobody does it better than George Nori. Right. And then he and, just and a Nori style. Then he just gives the number and goes back to break. Right. We ain't doing you like that. No. We have a uh, lot of good content. Sweet James still to come this hour in the Sweet James prize pack. Don McLean a little later. All the great prizes that come along with the PMS virtual Chevy Summer Tour. And don't forget. Click that link on the bottom and let it be known that click you want to win it. a brand new Chevy Silverado. But right now it is time for the top story of the day. Top story of the day. day. Top story of the day. Top you of the what? morning to you. Partner. Much obliged. Brought to you by Philippe's and the family pack we gave away in the very last commercial break. Get yourself that delicious family pack. Go enjoy it al fresca as you have many times, Pete. Or if you have family or friends outside of the greater Los Angeles area, do it through Gold Belly. Betty. Belly. Gold Belly. Goldbelly.com. Order that six pack and they'll thank you for it. Or all you could just pick up that long. and drive it and eat it in the car. Exactly right. Unless Man. you're a guy that wears his mask in the car alone. Then you can't, and then eat, you it. can't eat it. But you can smell it. It'll smash it on it. It'll delicious. smash against your mask. You can put it in a blender. You can get one of the masks with a straw. Top story of the day is a preview of what is to come when Don McLean joins us in the very next hour. We're going deep with basketball with McLean. He's going to have his jersey behind him, his Simi Valley. He's going to have his setup that he has on prime ticket for the Clipper game tonight. And we're going to have a setup for him. And we're going to have a setup down the hall with fully functional employee Adam with his clean shaven dome. It's it's intimidating. And I was and I was accosted. You were you were accosted by a snake on a trail. Well, it was on the trail. I was accosted. By a shaved-headed psychopath in the hallway before we got on the air today. Similar-shaped head as the snake I saw. Indeed. And the head moving back and forth oh, in a very was, erratic, spastic way. His head way. was moving back and forth. And he said, he said, hey, thanks for the shout-out yesterday. Special shout-out? And I said, which shout-out is that? You know, and this, and this is a true story as well, much like your snake story. He said, you know, story. you know, Pat Beverly's hurt. And I said... And Pat Beverly's the heart and soul of this team. You don't think anything's missing with Pat Beverly being out hurt? It's like I was just commenting on you being on Rogan and Rodney and talking for like of the 40 minutes of content, 35 minutes of the time. That's really all it was. Well, you know, there's challenges for every team. <laughs> Pat Beverly's out. Well, look, he he's a true believer. He is. If you believe in the Clippers. Well, then you shave your head and you act like a psychopath in the hallways of your office. If you're a person that really believes in the L.A. Clippers, fully functional employee Adam is your guy. And he's going to get going around, uh, well, 5 o'clock five tonight. O'clock on the Patriot. Uh, 6 o'clock tip. It is game 5, Clippers versus Mavs, first round of the NBA playoffs. That's down on the Patriot. Tonight here, uh, we have Dodgers. But, Matt, I mean... Hey, we got you, big hoops tonight. You want to listen to the Clipper contest in the right way? Get your uh, NHT Western Master of Hatters Texas Cowboy hat on. Wrap a nice American flag bandana around your neck there and go ahead and flip it over to 1150 The Patriot and feel your American roots. Won't it be a little bit like you're rooting for the Texas team then? That's a good point. You know what? Let's get to the Lakers first. Yeah, like, you know there. what? Let's that's, go, let's you know, go. How about that? That's a team that's doing really well. The Lakers yeah. and the Dodgers. I mean, they're, they're dominating. Hey, hey Lakers, there, Dodgers, they're Dodgers dominating. LeBron James, 36 and 10 in 28 minutes. That's lunacy. How about that? You know, it's playoff LeBron. That is more than a point per minute on 10 of 12 shooting. Four of five on his threes. He let all players in assists, doubling that of the next closest player. Uh. That is playoff LeBron. That is hyper focused. LeBron wants to win that championship. He's got his teammates focused. He's telling Anthony Davis, get your ears in the center spot and shut up. I hope he brings the bluest eye by Tony Morrison out there tonight and holds it after his presser. Me too. That's a good book. Fantastic. If we're going to do LeBron's book club, why not? Tony Morrison should be next. That's all I'm saying. I'm with you. Ralph Ellison after the next round. Let's go. Whoever and whatever the shooting woes were. Well, those took the night off. Because the Lakers were the worst shooting team in the bubble leading into this contest. And this was the best shooting night by the Lakers in months. 56% from the field, 44% what from the What uh, about the they-can't-shoot-hot take that was out there, man? <laughs> that hot take has been doused with a bucket of cold water. What, it, can it come back? It could. <laughs> it most definitely could. Uh, this one, however, was a testament to Frank Vogel. And we... And I am willing to admit that uh, all of my takes have been horribly off the mark. No, come on, bubble. Matt. Give yourself a break. You we know? wanted to burn it all down after that first game. Hammered him on social media. Chuck predicted the Lakers were going to get blown out 
Well, he had his swept by the Blazers, and instead it's been the exact opposite. A 20-point win was far too close of a final to really tell the story. It felt like a 50-point blowout, and obviously when you have a 29-point lead going into the halftime. Oh, back-and-forth game, though, Matt. 15 I mean, A real back-and-forth. And when I say back-and-forth, it was like back-and-forth between 30 and 20, and or about three quarters. We had mentioned the, uh, the Lakers were going to be tied up in a nasty knock down drag out street fight in the first round and then have to deal with either the thunder or the rockets well that series is now tied up at two unbeknownst to us in the moment as we interviewed george carl and i was kind of focused on the tvg there with the remote as opposed to watching the conclusion of the rockets thunder game that george carl told us in the middle of the interview man that was a great ending i can't believe the thunder just pulled it out we've been wrong about some things (laughs) however and by we it's really you because yeah. I don't really make NBA predictions because other than Vucevic, I mean, where's my interest? You know, it's just not worth it. Let me tell you, Pete. It life, really isn't. This life is not worth well, it. Well, it's the same thing that happens to every single guy because it all just goes back and forth. So the guy goes, yeah, well, you know, I think the uh, the Lakers are going to wear it. And the Lakers kind of wear it. And they're, See, I was right. The Lakers wore it. Now, and then they, have to, then they have to go back. But then it goes and then. Like your original take, well, then you shift 180 degrees from your original take, and then you have to go back. You have to go back, and and then back for doing that. You're really like Austin Powers, just trying to get out of that little area. Now here's the good news: back and forth, at least back, back, forth, and forth. At least we're not doing it through asinine analogies. Like the Cowboys are a summer blockbuster, and you spell that one out for five minutes, basically insulting the audience in the process. And and look, at least we're not doing that. The Patriots are the English patient. I mean, you know, it's it, they put it right. out to win the award. That's right. It's not really about the box office. There was something that George Carl said <laughs> yesterday, though, that got me thinking. It did? Underneath this big straw hat. Were you thinking like, hey, George Carl, what a delivery. <laughs> a lot of people on the text also. They sure were. He said, this isn't your standard playoff style basketball. The bubble is unique. The way the games are played are unique. The mindset of the players is unique. I thought that was interesting what he said. And we saw it yesterday. We saw it with the Sixers rolling over like the dead dogs that they were, despite being the choice to win the NBA championship by many a prognosticator prior to the season start. Well, no one had to take the blame for it, though, today or anything. Brett Brown was fired. But basically, the Sixers decided in that fourth game, really in the third game, too, why bother? Do I, do I really want to stay in a Disney hotel away from my family, away from my friends, away from functioning society for another week well, as you and know, win Matt, a game or two? As a Los Angeles Western resident for many years, we are the 123 Cancun town of record. It is 123 Cancun times 10 in the bubble. And that is why, after what the Lakers did yesterday... Straight to Magic City. ...against the Blazers... Ain't no way in hell the Blazers are winning another game. Because why? Well, Dame's out tonight anyway. Dame's out tomorrow. He's saying his knee. Oh, tonight's even, the Clippers. Tonight's the Clippers. With fully functional snakehead. And you think about the Clippers and what they have now found themselves as we shifted that. But the, the Blazers are not going to win that game. They're going to roll over and they're going to get the hell out of the bubble. Because hey. why stay three more nights in the freaking bubble when you have no chance to win a series? Feeling good about that prediction. Most Ke- definitely. Kimo Sabi. Most definitely. Well, Western flavor. <laughs> snap, snoop, snap, snoop. Slap, 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 slap. The Clippers had an opportunity to do that to the Mavericks in game four. They were up 21 they off the hook. in the first half. They were up 15 to 2. You pound it into their brain. Hey, Porzingis is out with an owie knee. Doncic is playing on a rolled ankle. We're up 15 2. We're up 21. Are you indicting Doc Rivers, their coach, and I the am. charming Doc Rivers, man? You, Are you indicting Doc you Rivers? They bury them, and they do the same thing, and they feel the same way. Look, you, know, you can I know. say what you want about Paul George, but I won't sit here and have you badmouth Doc Rivers. I know there's tornadoes, and there's thunderstorms, and there's hurricanes ravaging Texas right now. But that said, them players, they want to get out of that bubble. If you got no chance to win a series in advance, then you want to get the hell out of there. Well, most NBA players, even if you play for Texas, when the bubble's over, you ain't going back to Texas. No. <laughs> you would hope that there is a beach resort-style town yeah. that is ready to open their arms and welcome you. Oh, it's like a harem. It's like a whole thing. It's like a Instead? It's, it's a glorious death. Let's put it like that. Let's say hundreds of virgins. That would be something. You know, I watched Taken last night. 
And it's Taken it, Two. I watched Taken Two. You watched Taken. Isn't it satisfying to watch Liam Neeson beat the crap out of everybody yes, with a stick? No. Oh, less. it's the best. When he freaking shocks that guy to death. Awesome. Oh, the steady power flow here in Paris. Man, that sixty-five-year-old can really kick oh, some ass. Oh God! He, every time he punches a guy, the guy's dead. He kills him. You know what they say about Liam Neeson too? Huge poots. Huge. Biggest one in Hollywood. That's. Fastbender, they say, is the only guy who's got one that's bigger well, than Neeson. Well, unless we're going to dig up Uncle Milty exactly. or Peter Laurie. That's a dead D right there. You know, as far <laughs> Point being, the Mavericks not only think they can win this series, but they're looking ahead and going, Jazz? Nuggets? Well, that damn series as well. We got the best player in the bubble. They are now So supremely... the Clippers are toast, Matt? I'm saying. The they... Clippers are toast? Is they're that a... what you're saying? They're in for the fight of their life. That's what I'm saying. They let them off the hook. Up 15, up 21. The Lakers finished off the Blazers. They quit. They've already checked out. Portland's a beautiful place this time. Well, wherever they go, they'll enjoy their time off, I would assume. Same with the Mavericks. Had the had the Clippers gone up 3-1 instead, they believe. Well, they believe not only can they win this series, they can win the next series. And, hey, LeBron's pretty old. Who knows what's going to happen to that guy if he's got to play a whole bunch of minutes and get stuck in a nasty fight with the Rockets or the Thunder in the next round. We might be able to win this whole damn thing. Matt can take credit for that. Exactly right. It'll probably be horribly wrong. That's a good wrong. take. That, that's a good... I can take credit for that. Take. I mean, it's a flip-flop. I am back on the other side of the net. I we'll saw Nick Wright tonight. speaking of having hot takes about the playoffs and then, like, just living and dying with it. I saw Nick Wright tweet the other day, like, check out this. It is... My takes on the Lakers are chef's kiss. Perfect. <laughs> and it's like... You hey, tool. Hey, congratulations. Congratulations, sir. Fully functional employee Adam will have it at five, and he'll be delivering it in a very angry, angry manner. And that's on the Patreon. Well, he's he's a man on the edge. He doesn't know what happens next. That head is shade. That is not clipped. That is shade. Sweet James is next. What are we next? giving away right here? The Vans, Vans. right? Vans. Get Vans over to YouTube shoes. or Facebook. We're giving away five pair of Vans right now. And click the link at the bottom of the screen to win the Chevy. Exactly right. Now. That's how you do it. Sign up. Mike's YouTube on. And- We're ready to go. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, welcome back to the YouTube and Facebook stream. We are doing the uh, PMS Chevy Summer Tour. We're clicking the Modelo. Save the bottle cap for the Sweet James prize pack. Don't throw it. Can I snap Save it the, the bottle cap for the prize pack. Can I snap it at Kate's head? No. And then Kate's will give it back to me. Ready? Look, Matt. Watch your eyes. If you want to be that way. Now, I can't even find the... On the fan. Sports Radio. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are giving away five pairs Hello. of the brand new PMS Vans for your wearing pleasure. The brand new PMS Vans. Call 866-987-2570. Keyword cap. Cap. Or quit capping. Here we go. Uh, quit capping. Oh, uh, almost eight, got your balls. 570 Quit capping Matt. Oops, sorry. 866 987 2. That's just my dip cup. 570 to win your brand new PMS vans. Now, if Colin takes your name and you win the vans and nobody calls you for a while, don't worry. That's standard procedure. You're eventually going to get a call. Those vans aren't even made yet, they're still on the way over from Thailand. So, and I'm not even kidding. China. China? Oh, that's not as good as Thailand. I mean, we would have taken Thailand. Let's say Thailand. I think it's Vietnam. Okay. There you go. You know what? We can all we can we can all agree on Vietnam. Exactly right. Name. Uh, uh, so listen, uh, five pairs right now at eight six six nine eight seven two five seventy. Keyword cap. Quit capping. Quit capping. Either way, cap cap cap. What happened to my bottle caps? 866-987-2570. Uh, Dave Weiss never showed up, never nope. put a lasso, never put a whore, hobby horse. Never brought us uh, a pouch of Red Man. Where did he go? Did he just, he or did here? we shame him out of the set last time? 
Did we oh, shave yeah. him out right of the, the set elbow. last time? Is he is he is he butter? Is he butt hurt? Are you sure? It's like he shot his wad on the beach party. He got upset that we busted up the surfboard. You blew his wad on the beach party? <laughs> he did. Blew his wad on the uh, PMS beach, bl- He's an bingo, old man. beach blanket bingo? He's only got one round in him. <laughs> well, you know, it. we are sponsoring uh, Blue Chew starting this month. So uh, if you guys want to get some lead in your pencil, check out Blue Chew. A little extra for you all right there. Uh, so enjoy those shoes. We're going to talk to Sweet James. And speaking of bottle caps, it's not just Matt that can have fun with those. You too with the Sweet James prize pack and a bag of caps. Click at the bottom of the screen to win a brand new Chevy Silverado on the PMS Chevy Virtual Summer Tour. Live from the AM570 LA Sports Studios in Burbank, this is Petros and Money. Chef Marito! Ho ho! Like riding the trail to Old Mexico. Howdy, Petros and Money. Thank you for having Chef Marito Seasonings on as the official seasoning of the Petrus and Money Show. We're excited because this week we're giving away a delicious Chef Marito gift basket, as you can see right here. We have our wonderful carne asada flavor, our chicken seasoning, and a really spice things up this week. We've thrown in our fajitas marinade and fajita seasoning as well. So perfect barbecue basket with Labor Day coming up. We also have a wonderful $100 gift card that you guys can use anywhere. So keep watching and make sure to sign up to win. For our variety of seasonings and recipes, check us out at chefmedito.com. We also want you guys to make sure to tag us on any post of your homemade creations using Chef Medito. So make sure to tag us so we can keep an eye out on it. Also, it's not a true Mexican dish without Chef Minito, so bring out the chef in you. Catch every game on your home of the Dodgers. AM 570 LA Sports. Stay right where you're at. We'll be right back. Live from the AM570 LA Sports Studios in Burbank, this is Petros and Money.
games, but but let it, let's talk a little bit. We've talked about horses and dogs and things like that uh, and cattle in the past. Uh, they're not the same as people. If you kill somebody's <laughs> cow or somebody's longhorn steer, which isn't to say it isn't against the law. Uh, what what is the actual definition for what a horse is? Like when my family's horse burned down so horribly many uh, years ago. Uh, horse is considered chattel. It's property, uh, which brings me to a quick point. Uh, I know you teased me about going on the air with Sisney a lot. And uh, no. the first time I went Never. on there was with Sissini. The first question, and she's sitting there, Sissini. her producer is sitting there, and they read this question from a reader saying, a uh, listener saying, hey, my friend took their dog into the vet, and the vet messed up, and now the dog is missing a, a leg. What recourses do they have? What should she do? Wow. And I go, I go, well, she should name her dog Tripod or R2D suit. Yeah. Something three leg. And Sissy and the producer look at me like, we've just made the biggest mistake of our life getting this guy on the show. Hey, so, keeping it real. Uh, we reshot it but, and uh, fixed it up. But uh, that's Chattel all. is chattel, though. What, what, what does happen? Channel. If my, if my dog's three-legged because of somebody's negligence, yep. where, where is my recourse? Let's say somebody uh, left their garbage disposal on and my dog was jumping across <laughs> their counter and uh, his hind leg got caught in the disposal. Now he's and now around. I have... Yeah, now I have a three-legged dog. Who do I attack here? Yeah, you get no animals get no sentimental value. The courts just aren't going to apply that to a dog. So you get your the vet bills paid. Or What's the, the leg worth? Or the replacement of the dog. What about what about theft, James? <laughs> I know it's ridiculously uh, callous, but uh, what if I steal a horse? You know, there's theft and there's yeah. like grand yeah. theft. Like, it, does does the stealing of a horse constitute grand theft? It, depending on the value of the horse, if it's a uh, some two hundred dollar <laughs> mag, no, it's a thousand dollar. You know, $10, it's not a damn goat. This thing's got magical semen. It's a stud, <laughs> James. If I steal like a racehorse, am grand I going to get theft? Grand it is theft. grand theft. Yeah. Holy cow! Now. Now, however, my firm has actually been instrumental in uh, doing some uh, work. If you injure somebody's dog intentionally, their emotional stress can, 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 can attach. And my firm's done that. So, so usually, a dog is considered chattel. There's no value there. But if you intentionally hurt somebody's dog to emotionally damage somebody, you can, uh, you can, you can recover for that. So it's almost like Sweet. the degrees of, uh, of murder charges. Like if yes. it's premeditated, so like yes. premeditation when it comes yes. to <laughs> attacking a dog. Second and third. Yeah. How about that? There you go. Sweet James Bergener joining us right now in his studio in Jackson Hole with the big Western mural Ooh. behind him. There Look he is. Uh, Matt, Matt Money Smith happens to be in Bolivia. Uh, yeah. I'm in my backyard. <laughs> uh, call Sweet James at 800 500 5200 for great legal advice. Okay, well, speaking of cattle wrestling, let's All say right. Matt is a rancher. Matt's a cattleman, maybe a, a bit of a land a land baron, and uh, <laughs> and and me and a few of my benditos uh, take his oh. cattle, uh, erase his brand, or like oh. add to the brand Ooh. and make it like the Petros brand or whatever uh -huh. the Double P Ranch. Uh, the old P. And, and I and I try to assimilate his cows into mine now i know back in the day that was uh, a hanging violation but i'd imagine it's still taken pretty seriously out west sweet james it still is cattle wrestling yeah still gets you in trouble still does that guy hang rattle? but now uh well you that? never know it depends right depends right james i think there's some districts <laughs> where you will hang <laughs> Well, does that guy in Arizona <laughs> with the flannel ask questions like this about like cattle wrestling or, or using water out of somebody's well? No, no, he does not. No. <laughs> what if we go to our Wild West here uh, in some of our city landscapes, James, like, uh, like I've got behind me? Can I, can I perhaps constitute that, hey, look, it's the freaking Wild West out here in this neighborhood. <laughs> it's not the Wild West. And your laws do not apply. <laughs> But the laws of the Wild West do. Could we just, just is, Swiss is it, justice? Is that's it, right? With, with Cabrini like Green behind me, wrong, right? You can't like <laughs> sign a thing where like Matt and I want to have yeah. a gunfight, and like, hey, we're just going Wild West laws. We both signed right. this. Yeah, we, we both agree. A, a nope. duel, like we're in skulls, and we go out and we shoot each other in through the bejesus right there right. in front of that tenement that Matt's posing in front of right now. <laughs> it would what? be incredible. Unfortunately, it is illegal. You cannot uh, both be conspiracy. Even if we have the waivers. It would be a crime. Even if you have the waivers. Yeah. Look, so, we each signed a waiver. We agreed I, to this duel. I, it would be cool, but unfortunately, no. 
It's not gonna fly. What if somebody signs uh provides the dueling pistols? Doesn't matter. Uh, the, yeah, no, doesn't matter. They'll, they'd be part you know of what though? Would we like let's just say we duel and I won't say which one of us <laughs> comes out ahead, but one of us goes down, right? One of us gets that shot off and oh, they yeah. go down. All right. If we if we both agreed to the duel, would we just be charged with like a discharge of a firearm in public or would we be charged no. with manslaughter? Attempted murder. There you go. It would be uh yeah, you would be uh even if I don't want to press charges, even though Matt shot me, got shot me, and I didn't want to, and I didn't. Hey, want to I press signed up for charges. this. Yeah, let's no, say no, I didn't can, want to press. They're going to compel you to testify. The DA wants to charge Matt, so yeah, you can be. Well, if I get gut shot, I'm taking the fifth. <laughs> what if I refuse? What if I refuse to testify? You can be held in contempt, and uh, oh my you will stay in jail until you want to. So, how long can they hold you in jail to uh, being held with contempt? It depends on the judge, man. They can hold you for for as long as they need to. What is this, Jamaica? <laughs> <laughs> Bides cartel stuff? What is this? No. So let's, James, let's uh, let's take let's take gut shots off the table. Okay. We got our fancy Western outfits on here. I got a little uh, backdrop behind me that maybe some folks might find more interesting to look at than others. But let's say we have a Western theme at work. And let's say some people really embrace that theme. And maybe maybe a dude rolls in with some assless chaps. And maybe a lady rolls in. <laughs> that's with, not Western. That's just, that, that's just sexual. I mean, that's I'm just not, saying, let's say, let's say I as a boss say, hey, we're having a theme. And this and, is what, and you this is what let's, say a, let's say this is what a worker constitute as what they interpreted the theme to be. Boots, um, spurs, and assless chaps. That's what right. Who heard. could? Would I get in trouble as the boss <laughs> yeah. of the office? Like, is the is the office manager for setting the theme that some people perhaps decided to be scantily clad and come in and offended some folks? Like, what? Who's responsible I mean, for what people decide to wear? You're responsible for what you wear to dress appropriately. So yeah, you can. All right, you say, can get in trouble with that. <laughs> let's say they give away a prize for who has the best Western theme, and yeah. I run. 150 cattle through the bullpen and the sales area <laughs> and a cow knocked on martin, people. a cow knocked on martin out and he falls four floors into the loading dock oh man what, uh, I, I mean i win the i win the, the contest win. right yeah, and if i said look this is they said the most outrageous <laughs> wins like would i have a case uh, probably not. Probably, probably mm. not. I'd, I'd prep you though. You'd be all right. Money. And what if I showed up? What if Tim Cates showed up with his gun? It's, it's a hell of a time to get the cows to walk down the stairs. What if Cates shows stairs. up with his gun, <laughs> sweet James? Let's say he takes the Western theme to, and he shows up with two guns on his side. What kind of trouble can he get uh, into? He, he could probably get into some trouble with that too. Just don't do it, Tim. Don't do it, Cates. He's don't tempting. Well, what we've learned here is that the West is a dangerous place That's and a true. barren one, and you need to have representation if something happens to you. And that is the great sweet James Bergener, 800, 500, 50, 200, the dead spirit of justice in any century. And sweetjames.com if you need to get him online. We love you, sweet James. Thanks for being part of the tour. Love you, boys. Rock on. All right. Do now not leave. A lot more. Do not leave the broadcast. Make sure you are on YouTube. You are on Facebook. Put AM570 LA Sports into that search bar. It's an opportunity to win the Sweet James prize packs right now. We're still giving away that barbecue school or gift card. We're still giving away the Westinghouse 50-inch LED 4K Roku Smart TV and a host more. We got vans to give away. We're going until 5.30 p.m. Roll with us at YouTube or Facebook as the Chevy Virtual Summer Tour continues. Live from the AM570 LA Sports Studios in Burbank, this is Petros and Money. Kate, the YouTube chat feed has demanded a look at your haircut. I'm sorry about. Oh yeah, here's Kate. They want no, they want they want the back, Kate. They want to see that poof flap. They this want to see the the poof flap. This here. is the poof flap they're that like we're talking guy's about. Guy's like, I'm done. I can't take it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> look at that poof flap. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's uh, well, there's a real step in the back. Hey, it's a good effort. 
It's a good effort. It's a real, you know, usually if a dude has a step in his head, it's on the side or something like that, or or the Gumby with Bobby Brown. Well, I guess we're gonna have to take control. Gonna gotta take control. Gotta 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 take control. And Kate's has got it in the back. Which is kind of weird, you know? It's like a wedge They, they back needed there. to blend it a little bit better. It's just kind of no man's land. It's kind of no man's land out there, Casey. I don't think that's how they do it on Peaky Blinders. Hey, check out their feed. The guy is on the show. I did his haircut. <laughs> they love it. <laughs> what are we giving away? Oh, the Sweet James bag of glass. Bag of glass. So we're going to do, how about this? Because it is a bag of glass this time around and not a bag of buttons, we've decided to pair it up with Vans. Oh, it's a pairing? So we're going to pair five pair of Vans with five Sweet James Burger or prize packs. Five prize packs? That's right. Five chapstick sticks? You know what Imagine that is? Imagine stacking them all up like one big, long chapstick, <laughs> man. I'll tell you what that is. I know whose lips that could freaking moisten. Sugar. That's, that's sugar. Somebody with big lips. That's sugar in your shorts. A little right sugar there. in your shorts. A little big sugar lips in your there. shorts yeah. right there. All right. Yeah, We're Kylie you Jenner with your big ass lips. Holler at us, Kylie. Your code word is. Your code word is Peaky Blinders. Yeah. Which yeah. is not what Kate's haircut looks like. Peaky Blinders, 866 987 2570. Kate's, they want to know if you had to pay for that. Did you have to pay for your haircut? Oh, he paid. 40 bucks. 40 oh. bucks. Shit. <laughs> My man. One beer and it's the S word. Damn. 40 bucks. That's 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 a lot to pay. You know, Kate's in the back, it's a bad scene. Matt's actually right. I mean, it's it's uh <laughs> it's just it's Look, my hair look, if you guys got a problem with my hair, my hair looks good. Right? You know, I'm ready to rock. Nice I'm I'm ready. Hair, let, let's go start a cult. Hair's got some body. Hey, hey, let's go. Let's go. Let's go into the hills and start a cult. I don't care anymore. My you hat's know. not backwards. My head's just small, for those of you commenting. I have a very small head, and I believe this is a child's cowboy hat. So That's the hat we got from the yodeling kid at the Walmart. Exactly right. How about this one, Cades? The barber was wearing blinders. Ha! Yeah! Yeah! Hey, it's David Vaz saying, coming up, I will give you the connection between Mookie Betts and Kobe Bryant. Don't want to go anywhere. Stay where you are for the rest of the Petros and Money summer tour. I'm personal injury attorney James Bergener. Accidents can happen. If something happens to you or your family, call me. My firm and I will take you by the hand and guide you through everything. You see, personal injuries are just that. They're personal. You're not a number. You're more than just a name. This is your life. At my firm, each case is professionally and personally tailored to you. So if you've been injured, I've got your back. Call me now for a free consultation. You had a Mamba mentality on your Instagram. Were you a big fan of Kobe? Uh, were you a guy that loved his work ethic? What was it about him, or was it just the moment and the connection that you have being a girl dad? Um, you know, I, obviously I'm a fan, um, but, you know, I actually... Uh, talk, I got to talk to him a pretty decent amount, and um, really? yeah, um, through body armor, you know, we oh, yeah. do things yeah. together. And so, um, you know, when I was struggling last year, early on, you know, me and him talked a little bit, and he kind of, uh, you know, gave me some words of advice. And so, you know, I had talked last time I had talked to him, I told him, you know, I'll see you out in LA, and and then that kind of happened. So that was yeah. kind of unfortunate. We appreciate you for being part of what we do. A big thank you to you. We're not here if you aren't there. So thanks. Much obliged. Hi, Henry K from Barbecues Galore. Keep watching for your chance to win $1,000 gift card to Barbecues Galore. And remember, Barbecues Galore, not just a barbecue aisle, a barbecue store. This is the Vassay Report, featuring Dodger insider David Vassay virtually from Dodger Stadium with a selfie stick. Since we are celebrating Kobe Bryant this week, a little known fact that Mookie Betts and Kobe actually had a very tight relationship. So tight that Mookie Betts spoke to Kobe last year when he was playing in Boston and got tips from Kobe on how to get out of an early season slump. No mechanical tips, but mental tips. Kobe's biggest advice to Mookie, strike fear in whoever your opponent is. That's your Dodger Report. I'm David Vassay. Enjoy the rest of the summer tour.
The nice thing about attending a virtual summer tour. So this is completely different, completely different group of players. Is that when David Vasse comes up. That just shows you kind of a small town. That- you can mute him. Ah! You need to sign up to win this Chevy Silverado. Go to am570lasports.com, keyword Chevy. Chevrolet, find new roads. Now back to Petros Papadakis and Matt Money Smith. Siento. Don't go in if you don't know the way out. Talking out big Petros and money AM570 LA Sports second hour. Get in the game of the seventh and penultimate stop of the Petros and Money Chevy Virtual Summer Tour. We only have two more of these left, really one and a half more left. So get right here. If you are watching on YouTube and Facebook below us, you click that banner. Click that the will link. Take you to the sign up to win a Chevy Silverado. If you aren't watching, well, first of all, if you're not watching on YouTube or Facebook, for shame. For shame. And two, get to AM570 Says that right there on the side. Right there, for shame. Says tonight. Says my wife. Tonight. My wife. Says great sports talk. Great sports talk. For shame. Says for shame. Two at Mono Tuesday, which it is. Two, two. Two at Mono. Two, two. Says no. Not much. Says I'm a horse Monday on a Tuesday, which is pretty weak. I'm a horse. And then it says, my man. My man. Uh, little sugar on your shorts, my man. We're happy to be here together. Sugar shorts and all. That's me. They call me sugar shorts. Well, Matt, you've always been very likable. I don't think that's what it is. Oh, yeah, it is, man. We're drinking our Modelo. We're so happy to be here, and we still have our biggest prizes to give away. This 50-inch Westinghouse HD Roku TV to watch Wagon Train on, and, of course, the Barbecues Galore gift card for $1,000. So your chow bucket line. I mean, it's a Western theme. you got to have the open flame. Yeah, when they ring the bell in the old, uh, what do they call that, the chuck wagon. You'll be uh, satisfied. There's your there's your bell. That means chaws on the table. That's right, Matt. Open flame, cook your food, $1,000 gift card. Barbecue Galore is not a barbecue op. It's a barbecue store. Damn right. BBQGalore.com. Big thank you to Henrik. This is the seventh. Thank you, Henrik. $1,000 gift card will be given away, and you only got two more shots at that. And 1000 bucks going to buy you the big ticket item of your choice, the pellet grill, the big green egg that you've been having your eyes on. Boy. You watch those Dodger games, and Joe Davis tell you some tales about that big green egg and all the great things it can do. We can't all afford one, but he can. And you win yourself a gift card. Guess what? You're right there you with him. You can't do. Now you're big green Bang. egg and with the big green egg. Exactly. Now you're even on the equipment. Let's see who's the better griller. Speaking of eggheads, Clippers versus <laughs> Mavericks tonight. Listen to Game 5 on AM 1150. We got that. And here on your home of the Dodgers, which we are, no, the team, the official, the people, playing in San Francisco tonight. Meet me at the statue of Willie Mays and be rejected at the door. Uh, versus the Giants, Morongo Casino pregame show starts at five thirty. First pitch at six forty-five. I don't wax my chest. I just don't have a lot of hair. Right, and uh, same with me. I'm a hair. Actually, I was getting. Uh, I, I was have- getting. Very hairy nipples, though. Yeah, you do. It's very gross. I was being uh, medically examined examined today, and uh, EKG, and uh, she said, uh, for a Greek, you're not hairy. Right. And I said, yes. Astute observation. <laughs> Thank Ma'am. you. Thank you, woman in mask in my house at 8 a.m. Do you smoke? No. What do you mean? He smokes all the time. Shut up, kid. <laughs> Smoking doobs all the time, Dad. <laughs> Shut up. Shut up. Get that kid out of here. It's not my kid, by the way. Oh, look, my wife literally grabbed him by his upper arm. My wife? Smoke? No. What about all those doobs, Dad? <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Life insurance. What an adventure. Right. Uh, Matt, I got word of the day for you here. He heard me with his words. The word of the day. Brought to you by Philippe's on Alameda. Go on down there and eat. Al Fresquita. Or you could pick it up. Or you could go on Gold Belly if you live in Amsterdam. That works really well. Ooh, speaking of Amsterdam. 
you know, Dad, <laughs> do you smoke, sir? Uh, do you have any uh, HIV? No, no. Uh, any kind of anxiety? No, you know, me? I don't know. Anxiety? Let me check. Do you take anything for your anxiety? No, no. Oh. Sleep apnea? What? No? What? Nope. Diagnosed? No, not hey. me. What about uh, smoking? No, never. Smoking? <laughs> Did you- <laughs> what about ye- all them dudes, Dad? Eight years old. Eight. <sighs> Today's word of the day is portal. portal. Talked about this, Matt. The portal potty? No. Nobody's blowing it out in the portal. Unless you mean blowing out of the West Coast. UCLA starting tackle Jake Burton has entered the NCAA transfer portal with hopes of landing with a team so he can play this fall, which was promised in his letter of intent. He started 23 games in the past two seasons at right tackle for UCLA. Kind of important. He Tackles appears are important. in the portal as a graduate and would not require immediate eligibility to transfer. UCLA's in the Pac-12. They ain't playing. That was announced on August 11th. This guy, he wants to play. As I've explained, most college football players do, but they're in the they're in the Pac-12 or Big Ten or not. And uh, Burton says, I was looking forward to finishing my career with my Bruin teammates. Due to circumstances beyond anyone's control, that is not possible this year. Well, it was beyond, uh, not beyond Larry Scott's control there, Burt Toe. After much thought, I've decided to enter the portal. The porno? The portal. Oh. In champs, in, 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 uh, in hopes of gaining the opportunity to play football this fall. His departure, a redshirt senior, means the Bruins have to replace three of their starting offensive linemen from last season. Center boss... Tagaloa graduated, uh, so did Chris Murray, the guard, and uh, he he was uh, also a transfer portal guy. So here's a, a Pac-10 or Pac-12 starter who does not want to not play in the fall. He does not want to not play. Correct. As I've told you, most of these guys. They want to play. They want to play. And they're going to find a way to play. So UCLA has uh, lost a starter. Whether that's Georgia State, whether that's La Tech. Hey, Matt. That's well, LSU. They're hiring big-time broadcast teams to call those games. Darn right they are. Guess who's part of it? Am I? Yeah. My Say what happened that one year you took the deal with the devil and did five Conference USA games. I never worked again after that. Not but man, much. I had a hell of a 2020. The backside of 2020 kicked in. <laughs> Matt, you got the number of the day. Here's my number. Uh, 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 number of the day. Breaking Cajuns were playing. My oh, phone was on. ringing. We were down in uh, Lafayette. Come on now. <clears throat> Your number of the day. Duck Commander is, gave me a drink. Uh, 12. 12. Now, we have had this discussion on the show. Now, this is our 14th year. So it's been it, a while. It has appeared. There was some trivia up there saying when the first show was. It was kind of upsetting to see. Yeah, it's been a while. It appears sporadically. But. We like to address the outdoor urination conversation from time to time. Look, I feel kind of entitled. Right. You want to take a pee in your backyard? Take a pee. Now, I did get caught the other day. Um, Which is fine. We have one patch of grass, like literally just very small patch. And I was peeing on it. My wife was like, and I was caught. Like I was mid My wife! And she was you like, can do it. You just got to ride that thing like, out. Really? Yeah. Like the bathroom's right here. Yeah, really. Like, just feel like peeing outside. I think we all, <clears throat> in, the, uh, in the way Dave... Damashek likes to describe it. Make water outside. Oh, you know what? They, you know what? <laughs> when, when nature calls. It's not just Damashek. That's Cormac McCarthy in the great uh, Lonesome Dove. Make water. Oh. Gus went to the side of camp to make water. If you got to make water, and especially if perhaps you've been consuming beverages of the alcoholic variety, you are willing to make water wherever, whenever. If you pay a mortgage or a lease on a brick and mortar home with a yard. It's almost like you have to, as I, a man. I had the, I believe I've told the story before, but it's been a long time. I had the it's unfortunate experience of being written up for public urination <laughs> when I visited a friend at Southern Illinois University during their big whatever party it was Very called. Very interesting. Spring or something. The home of the Salukis, an Egyptian dog. Who does not urinate outdoors at it's all? Very, it's like New Orleans. You know, <laughs> you could commit murder, but they don't want you peeing in the street. It won't poop unless it has a bidet. It's remarkable what that, the Saluki, what the Saluki is. Does. One of the most honorable of dogs when it comes to uh, it, getting rid of its own waste. But uh, went to an alley and um, decided to let it go, and sure enough, there was an officer of the law right there to write me up. And uh, hey, son, you got your puzo out there? <laughs> yeah, I do. <laughs> 
<laughs> I'd go back for a court date. What's that in your hand? A Coors Light? What was that that your son was saying you like to do from time to time that we decided to do on the way down before our court appearance? I don't, Bad decisions. I don't, I don't, my son's mistaken. All around. It was a uh, disaster. Anyway. Amsterdam has now installed P. Get a look at these. 12. Amsterdam. Amsterdam was tired of all of their historic buildings, the streets, because it is a city that likes to party. And a lot of beer drinking, Matt. Be- Heineken Brewery right there. Right. Got thrown out of that brewery, as a matter of fact. They told you you could stay as long as you Did want. You pee on them, too. I think I peed on them. <laughs> they have installed what they call green pee. These are urinals that are just scattered outside oh God, we've, around the city. We've really come to that. Where they're saying, hey, if you want to pee outside, pee outside. We don't care. Do it in a tight quarters where there's a bunch of bars. But when you're peeing on the street, you're kind of wrecking our streets. It's breaking down all that grout. It's it's hurting the buildings. So why not The acidic pee? nature of your, exactly. of your liquor urine. So I these are it. scattered throughout Amsterdam. There's... I mean, you're basically just pulling it out and taking a whiz in front of everybody. That's yeah, well, they used by, to have like a lot. If you've traveled in Europe, you know, there's a lot of kiosks and touristy stuff. It seems as if they've been replaced by those porta potties. These uh, urinals. Uh, well, here's the deal. So the question is if, let's just say these are scattered around your neighborhood. Would you be comfortable with a bunch well, of people walking around in my neighborhood? Yeah, like in where? Or do you I live? mean in an urban? Or let's just say, let's say you go down into Hermosa Beach, Hermosa, or, or, or down Redondo by the water? Beach, or you're going down somewhere where there's a lot well, of bars you and you're go, walking you around. Go, but uh, would you, uh, would you, would you hit the alley, or would you use one of the green pea urinals to help water those those greens and keep the city clean? You know, it's a tough decision, right? Yeah, I got. Let me say this. Uh, first of all, it doesn't water any greens. It, they say that the chemicals oh, gonna, that it mixes oh, with... Oh, they're going to re... It, it somehow no, allows no, it no. to fertilize the greens, and they say attract bees. They're lying, dirty Europeans. <laughs> uh, which is fine, you know, we, but we know them to lie. I mean, look at them. I mean, I'm no Anglophile. But, Matt, I got to say, let's say you're known as the village ram, as they would say down in the, the Virgin Islands. You got the biggest pootso in town. Sure. And you got to pee. And you look and you look and you're looking for one of these places. The green pee. And you see behind you, everybody wants to look at your pootso. So what do you do? You know, I mean, they're going to be speaking of peaky blinders. You're going to have peekers all over the place. Sure. You're out there in the open air. Somebody coming over. Mm, let me well, take a look. That, that's a nice hey, looking uh, thing you got. Yeah, there. look at that. Oh, thank you. Hey, you know what? What they said about you is true. You got a real trombone down there. <laughs> you know, I mean, <laughs> I mean, look. To me, I don't think people look. If you you take a risk like you did that that fateful day in Southern Illinois, and I failed. When you whip out your puzzo in public, you take a risk. It shouldn't be legal. <laughs> it should be illegal. It should be illegal. That we shouldn't facilitate whipping out the poots. But green pea produces organic fertilizer and water, which is used to feed and water the city's green spaces. Whatever. Listen, <laughs> if you if you can drink a twenty two ounce Heineken and get all drunk to where you have to pee, yeah. That's that good then you can figure here. out a way to, way to deposit your urine without having everybody. Like, I don't want to watch you do like, I don't want to be walking in Amsterdam and be like, God, oh, is this beautiful? And seeing some guy do like the, I get the chills urine shake. Like, <laughs> Ooh, like when he's up there, it's like, I don't want to see that. Like, I got to see it in a bathroom. You know, I don't want to see that when I'm, hey, kids, look at this. Uh, look at all the bicycles, this great city. <laughs> I want to see him peeing on the wall. You know, and then what's to stop a hobo from whipping it out and doing something else? Well, you know what I'm I think saying? green pee, no green pee. Well, that what I'm saying do is, you know, once you got Puzo's out, what's the next step? Sure. What's the next step? Fair point. It's, Fair the point. next step is anarchy. What they do at, everywhere. Caligula. What they do at that Heineken brewery isn't cool. They don't give you a restroom in that tasting room, and they say, hey, you can stay as long as you want. You got to exit, though, in order to hit the head, and there's just people freaking out because they're drinking all that <laughs> beer. <laughs> and some of them are just like, hey, I don't care. I'm just going to pee myself. I just don't care. I'm going to drink this free beer. That's the spirit. That's it. Look, Matt, I'm against it. Okay. I thought about it. That's why I asked I you. I thought about it. Warriors big. I don't want to see anybody getting the urine chill. Warriors big. You don't want it on outdoor, my vacation. Outdoor urinal. Ooh. Well, they're there. This is the song of the day. <laughs> Rhino Music, Matt. They'll teach you how to do the urine shakes. Darn right. Rhinomusic.com. Piano, bass, guitar, singing, and is that guy uh, the drums. Nope, just rocking out. He got music lessons at Rhino Music. 99 expert, bucks. For expert music. Eight lessons. Yeah. Expert musicians. Eight lessons. $99. That's what you get right now when you mention PMS after you visit Rhinomusic.com. Get on it. If your kid is into it or you're into it, start that musical adventure. Ronnie! Go shoot Ronnie. He loves it. Good thing I'm wearing my bulletproof vest today. 
Gold in Them Hills is our song of the day. A happy country tune from an artist named Nathan Moore. Because the Petros and Money Show virtual Chevy Summer Tour is live on your smart device via Facebook and YouTube, where you can walk away with some great prizes that will be given away throughout this broadcast. And the Dodgers are back at it in the city by the bay with the Giants in town tonight. And our friend Tim Cates will have your Morongo Casino Dodgers on deck show, pregame show, whatever it's called, at 530. Thank you, Ronnie. Coming up next, Don McLean on the Zoom. Get on YouTube. Get on Facebook. Type AM570 hey, Lay Sports into the search bar. The green pea's sexist, too. Unless you're going to have a thing where the right. ladies can squat over the hey. thing. Hey. Sorry. There's a website for that. Sorry, ladies. Public Amsterdam urination. <laughs> Sorry, ladies. My man. <laughs> uh, we'll be right back. We're going to give away. Oh, yeah. Commercial break. What's We're the big away? prize on YouTube and Facebook away, here? Chef, Chef Merito Spice Basket and a $100 cash card right now in the commercial break if you get to YouTube or Facebook. And sign up for the Chevy at the bottom of the screen. Exactly right. Batch. Live from the AM570 LA Sports Studios in Burbank, this is Petros and Money. Kate, do you like to pee outside? Uh, he lives in the hills. Right? I think the last time I did it was like at the Rose Bowl. After you live in the last time? That's horse crap. The last time? You don't pee outside while you're sitting outside while you live with all women? Maybe? I don't know. Not in your backyard ever? Not in your neighborhood ever when you were doing all your walks? You didn't have to like hop in a bush and take a leak? How about that? You live in the country. Perfect. You stay yeah. in the hills. As uh, Adam Carolla regularly points out, chicken shit tickets all over Burbank. Chicken ass. Chicken ass. Why, Matt? Why do you have to push the well, envelope? I think the, um, now that he does the podcast, Why do you have to do him, it, Matt? I can't help myself, man. Why do you want so to do tough. it? You're wearing the hat? It's so or? tough when I say What is it, man? Why? <laughs> like, we've been told not to swear. I thought, I like I'm not in, do you? Oh, I thought that was just last week. No. I, I mean, I said- I'm not put, kidding. Like, I, I said, thought that was a one-week thing. I said the P word. Like Pussy Galore, the, right. the Bond uh, villain. What? It's a Bond it girl. Uh, I True. said that word. But, you know, I didn't mean for you to start, you know, dropping big turds all over the place. <laughs> I mean, you're dropping some big cow turds. I mean, that's not that big of a deal. It's a chicken ass ticket. Well, I don't want, I wouldn't. They ride them all over you know, town. Tim Cates is deeply associated with the Burbank PD. He is. And it's a very touchy subject he amongst people these days. He brought it up. He days. said it's Burbank. He knows uh, I don't think we need to get into the police relations right now. I wouldn't get a ticket. Yeah. What was that movie with Kiefer Sutherland and. Uh, Lost Boys? No. That was a good one, though. <laughs> the one where they're cowboys in the city, him and Woody. Remember, they go to the city and they're both cowboys. They don't know how to act. And they just, him and Woody, Woody Harrelson. And they're like just doing it, dirty. Cash money train? No, that's Woody and Wesley. That's right. A uh, money train with the Ken Booth uh, in the soundtrack, and J Lo, uh, the bad guy in Money Train, Robert Blake. How about that? Thank you, Ricky. Why else is Robert Blake in the news? Where else do people know Robert Blake from? Hmm. Well, he did a good movie with Bob Redford back in the day, Joe Kid, I think it was called. Where he plays a, a nah, half Native I American. Else. I think there's something else. Well, Robert he turned Blake. his wife's head into a canoe over at oh, Vitello's. That's what it is. Yeah. Studio yeah. City adjacent. Your dad regularly plays. Well, back in the pre-COVID days, regularly. We'll get back there, Matt. Damn right, we will. Joel Klatt tweeted that we would. So what? Uh, the Cowboy Way. Thank you. That's the name. How about that? Kiefer Sutherland and uh, Woody. The Cowboy Way, and they, he orders a steak. And he was just like, hey, why don't you just wipe its ass and knock the horns off and I'll eat it right here at the table, bitch. What's it's me, word? Woody Harrelson. What's our keyword? Uh, keyword is uh, Longhorn <laughs> Steer. Longhorn Steer, 866-987-2570. Chef Merito gift basket with a $100 cash card for the first person When you're peeing in that Amsterdam place, you can be like, hey, that guy's a Longhorn Steer. Exactly. Right. Yeah. I did because you gave. I grew because you sewed, I created, I played, I taught, I climbed, I found Christ because I saw him reflected in you. A cowboy needs a horse, needs a horse, needs a horse, and a pair of jangly spurs, jangly spurs, jangly spurs, and a big old stupid hat, stupid hat, stupid hat, if he wants to keep riding. 
riding along. Live from the AM570 LA Sports Studios in Burbank, this is Petros and Money. The Sweet James team can't do for accident victims. Win the ultimate summer prize pack by tuning in to the 2020 PMS Virtual Summer Tour. I'm accident attorney James Bergener. Look, these times might be unprecedented, but they are not uncertain. You see, this nation is made up of people just like you. You have family, you have friends and others that depend on you. And even remotely, you get the job done. So do I. If you've been injured in an accident, I've got you. We'll get through this together. Remember, click the link at the bottom of the screen and win a brand new 2020 Chevy Silverado. Strong for all the roads ahead. Masks on. And now back to the Petros and Money Virtual Chevy Summer Tour. Petros and Money, AM570 LA Sports. It is the seventh of eight stops on the Petros and Money Chevy Virtual Summer Tour. That's right, there is about one and a third of these left, so get after it. AM570 LA Sports.com slash Chevy. To register to win that Silverado. Still to come on this broadcast, if you're listening on the radio, do yourself a huge favor and find your way to YouTube or Facebook right now. Type AM570 LA Sports into the search bar. That will get you to the live virtual summer tour feed so you can watch the video of what's about to come and in just minutes. And not by minutes, we mean in the next hour. In less than an hour, we're going to give away a 50-inch TV and we're going to give away a $1,000 gift card to Barbecues Galore. That is all still to come, but P, they got to get to the Zoom right now so they can see this. Speaking of grilling, Matt, he is a grill master, and they can see it. Is absolutely right. That beautiful retired 24 Simi Valley jersey in the background. I know for a fact his executive producer is on eBay currently trying to buy a taxidermy snakehead for the future if the Clippers can continue in the bubble in the playoffs to talk basketball and to be the centerpiece of our show the baddest hombre from before they built the 118, the great Don McClain, ladies and gentlemen, our BFF on the Silverado celebrity Zoom call and Ooh. click at the bottom of the screen so you can sign up to win a Chevy right now. We all have our attire, except for the cowboy Don McClain, which was your nickname, Don, uh, when you were in high school. Is that correct? You know who gave me that nickname? It's a long story. And there's only, I think, one or two people that still call me that. Joel Myers, your old friend, Matt, that gave me the yeah, cowboy. Yeah, from yeah right, I did. Yeah, I was, yeah, right, I give it to him. I was being recruited by UCLA back in the day, and you mentioned it, Pete. Simi Valley was its own little community, almost like the end of the world, not like it, it is now. And so everybody kind of, I don't want to say made fun of me, but made fun of the fact that I was from Simi, which – was viewed as the end of the world. So um, 
hence the cowboy moniker, which you guys are displaying rather well. Matt, your background, by the way, pretty sweet. I thought mine was sweet. Right? We, oh, I got, I got more, Don. Rebounding again? How do we have all these shots of me rebounding when I never rebound? I thought you'd appreciate that. <laughs> I figured that was... No love for Elvis starring in Flaming yeah. Star? I mean, come on! About me, about me. Matt threw me up in his background. Come on. <laughs> well, I mean, come on, Flaming Star! Elvis is a uh, half Native American and he's caught between two worlds. Eh, forget it. Uh, I'll try to find a picture of you, Don. Uh, Don, we got the Clippers tonight on AM 1150. Everybody's excited, obviously, about the way uh, the Lakers are playing. Uh, there's been a lot of anticipation for the bubble. Now bubble playoffs are on and cracking, and there's a lot of stories to get to, which is why you are the centerpiece with your Sonos in the background of, of today's show. So I just I got to ask you what I asked Matt yesterday when he was talking basketball. Are the Clippers toast? No, they're not toast, but it, it is a little disappointing that they haven't kind of put their foot on the gas pedal yet. I think we saw it. And what's interesting is I really believe this. In game one, when they went up 18-2, to two, they could have ended the series right there. They could have. If they had stomped them and continued to put pressure on them and won game one by 30 or 40, I think it would have taken the will and the spirit of the Mavericks, but they let them back in to the point where they thought if Porzingis didn't get tossed, they would have won game one. And then game two, you came out kind of flat. Mavericks get up 15-2. to two. And they win that game. And then game four, I mean, this Doncic is a bad dude, man. Like, he's starting to, you know, he's starting to start conversation about this guy might be one of the all-time greats um, in the near future. And so they got a problem. But that doesn't mean that they can't turn it up. And I fully expect maximum effort, maximum attention to detail, and a great defensive effort tonight in, in a win here in game five. Don, in, in terms of uh, what they need to do, the one thing that, that we discussed yesterday that was super interesting is defensively and, and how you have two of the great wing defenders and arguably the two, you know, when you talk about them as a tandem, the best wing defenders in all the playoffs, and yet if these switches are coming immediately, like three, four seconds into the shot clock on a high screen roll. What, what's going on there? Why are they not defending differently? That's a great question, Matt. And look, Doc's done a terrific job since he's been here in LA and, and he's won a lot of games. But I, I just, I'm confused by the screen roll coverage with Doncic. I really am. Like, he's a 31% three point shooter. If I was guarding him, I would three arm gap him, put my arms down, and say, go ahead, dude, shoot it. Because you're not beating us from behind the line. He's not. He might make two, three, four. He might even make a game winner like he did in game four. But he is not beating us from behind the three point line. Where he is beating them, is by getting into the paint and either scoring himself or kicking out to shooters when the help comes. And I just think they're sending them down, they're sending them away from the pick, which gives them a free ride into the lane. And I just, like you said, Matt, if I got PG and Kawhi, I'm squaring him up, playing him straight. When the screen comes, then we can decide if we're gonna switch, but that big has to be up. If the big's plugging or, or he's back, that just gives Doncic all the room he needs to make plays. And so maybe tonight, We'll see a change in that pick-and-roll coverage, but I've been surprised at how much they've allowed Doncic to get in the paint in the first four games. Man, just routinely, you look up, and it's Lou Williams or Reggie Jackson. It's guarding him, and it's just a no-win prop. You saw it late. Those guys aren't good. Those guys aren't good defenders. Which, by the way, Matt, everyone talking about, like, why should have switched on that? Look, that shot that Doncic made, it doesn't matter who was guarding him on. That was a yeah. step-back, fall-away 29 foot three. Kawhi couldn't have done anything about that either. In terms of, you know, what we saw late in that game, though, prior to that three, you saw a ton of Kawhi, and you did see him fight through those screens and a lot of man. Do you think that's Kawhi demanded, or is that Doc directed? What happened in those final four minutes in overtime of that game? It depends on how good the screen set, where it's set, um, you know, the threat of Doncic. I believe that Doncic gets worn down you know, by the end of the game because he's gotten the ball in his hand so much. But it turns out it didn't in game four. He still had enough to make that shot. But, yeah, that, that's a read type thing, Matt, where if you feel like you can fight over and stay in front, then you do that. But if you feel like you're going to get hung up on the screen, then, then you call out the switch. And, you know, most NBA teams now switch. And that's why, for what I do in pre-draft, it's interesting. And this manifested itself a few years ago where – it became really popular and really apparent that they want multi-positional defenders 
that can switch everything. Whether you're a six nine guy or a six two guy, you have to be able to switch and keep people in front. So everyone switches, but that doesn't mean it's right either. Especially with a guy like Doncic, like you're really he's going to call whoever he wants in the switch for the ball screen. He gets the switch and then he's attacking that guy. So it's pretty simple if you're as good as Doncic is. But we'll see tonight. I have a feeling now that it's 2-2 and maybe you didn't believe it, you better believe it now. And I think they may change some of that coverage. Just because you're doing it, don't make it right. Don McLean, ladies and gentlemen, there's his neck. Join Damn us it. on the Zoom on 570 LA Sports. Watch it on YouTube or Facebook. It is the PMS Chevy Summer Tour, and we have the man himself from Prime Ticket. And, of course the Pac-12 Network, not to mention CAA and the Conejo Valley oh, Basketball there. Club. There he is, Cowboy Don McClay. There we go. The great uh, <laughs> Jim Herrick. Uh, Don, you never went in a shooting slump. God knows. Uh, you just got your hip replaced, and you still can shoot it sitting down in that chair. But uh, what would you say to Paul George right now? Are people saying too much to Paul George right now? It, it really seems like a mess as far as, as PG goes, and you know him well. Here's one of the unanticipated things of the bubble is this. You know, if you get into a bad way, which PG is, you would go home, go see your parents, go drive up the coast, go do something to clear your head. But you're in the bubble, and I don't care if you can go fishing, you can go play golf, you are still in the bubble thinking about basketball. There's no one around, you're your family, um, your kids, your mom, your dad. There's nothing like that to take your mind off of it, so you are swimming in it. And that's exactly what PG's doing. And it's like, what I would say is you got to clear your head, but how easy is that when you're stuck in the bubble? And so he's got to play. And the one, the one thing that I saw in game four, which is a little troubling, is when you get a player, and I don't care how good you are. He's a superstar player. I was the 12th guy. I was a sixth man. When you get into this situation – you have to just play and not think about shooting, not thinking about scoring. But the troubling thing is PG stopped looking at the basket in game four. Like he late in that game, he was catching it and swinging it and passing it. He didn't even look to score. And if he's going to get out of this, it's not a volume thing where every time I catch it and I try and score to get myself out of it. But I have to at least look at it. And so that when I do get an opportunity, I give myself a chance to get out of this thing. But he is in it. And it's going to be hard for the Clippers. I still think even with PG playing this way, they can still beat the Mavericks. But moving ahead, if PG doesn't give them the production that they're used to, it's going to be hard for them to get all the way to the finals. I think one of the probably more remarkable moments, it's fine. You know, you're right. He was way off on threes. But, man, when that layup was right there uncontested and it ended up hitting the bottom of the rim, that really kind of lets you know how bad it was. Don, in terms of if you were coaching there, what would you say? Would you try to green light him early? Or, like, how do you approach that? Because, like you said, you can probably survive with him continuing like this. But, man, the way Doncic is playing, it's going to be awfully hard. Yeah, here's the thing. If you run a play for him, let's say we start the game tonight and you run a play for him, okay? And because everyone knows, and PG knows, okay, they're trying to get me out of this thing. What if he misses? You know, then you're gripping again. It's almost like you have to just go play, get in the flow of the game. Hopefully you get an easy one. Hopefully you get fouled early, get to the free throw line, see a couple go in, and then maybe you shake this thing off. But I don't, I don't subscribe to that. Let's run a play for him early because – He's already pressing. If the shot doesn't go in, now he's pressing even more. Just play. Go defend. I, what I would do, honestly, is I would put him on Doncic to start. Hey, just focus on shutting this guy down. That's your only focus. Don't worry about offense. And then it turns out when you have that mindset, usually when you lose yourself on defense, lose yourself in going and getting rebounds, and you're not thinking about offense, the offense will come back. Don't forget, we got the Clippers tonight on AM 1150, the Patriot. Right here, we got Dodgers Giants on AM 570. You're watching the Petros and Money Chevy Virtual Summer Tour with our guest. We very rarely see him in person these days. Uh, the one and only Don McClain, who has done a couple summer tours uh, yep. in his day. Uh, long right. drives down to the Orange yeah. County Long Beach. It's always three hours away. Can't catch it. <laughs> I believe there was a bad back situation once, a really bad back situation at the ballast point. Yes. Yeah. But uh, overall, Don, the Lakers have looked uh, spectacular 
Uh, is that a good word uh, for what they're doing right now against a team a lot of people thought might give them trouble? What is what is their bubble experience telling you that uh, you didn't think before in these playoffs so far? Well, I think a lot of people, when the seeding games were going on, were examining all these upper echelon teams too much um, because they were, you know, Lakers had the one seed locked up, and so they didn't need to do a lot. And so they were just getting through the seeding games waiting for this. Now, game one was a little – a little bit of a head scratcher, uh, but they've turned it up since. And you see how good they can be defensively. And I think what surprised everyone is how good they've been um, the last few games without Avery Bradley and without Rondo defensively. And so if they can sustain this level of defense, they're going to be hard to beat. And, and I've said this for years with you guys on this show, you just don't bet against LeBron, whether you like him, whether you don't like him. This guy's unbelievable, and when he decides that he's going to compete and he's going to turn it up, he turns it up, and he's turned it up the last few games here. Yeah, two things on on the Lakers, Don. One, you alluded to it, the the fact that their offense struggled through every single seeding game. They were the worst shooting team, yet Frank Vogel opted to go with that defense-centric lineup, and it shut down the most explosive offensive team and has in all three of those games. Did that surprise you that that was his choice? And then second, uh, what do you make of them You know, in that pivotal game three just hammering Anthony Davis at the five and ignoring whatever his wishes may be and, and that being the big difference? I still don't know, Matt, what this whole – Anthony Davis at the five. Why is this even a thing? Like, he, so nobody even calls him numbers anymore. Like, he's, he's just out there, and, yeah, he's the tallest guy on the court, and, yeah, you're at the five, but no one cares. I, I still don't understand why that's a thing. But it is their best lineup, and I think the more this goes on, I think Anthony Davis will see that that's their best lineup and that he won't care if he's being called a five or, or not. Um, In terms of the lineup that Vogel went with, I think he starts with defense. I think he understands that he's got LeBron and he's got AD, so let's make sure we have the best defensive unit. We're going to score enough because we have those two guys, Um, but we want to set the tone defensively, get stops, and then LeBron will figure out the offense for us. What would be a stumbling block for the Lakers uh, that you could envision uh, in the next few weeks? Uh, or, or do they look like a, kind of a juggernaut back in the Kobe Shaq days when they were being unchallenged? Well, it's all matchups in the playoffs, Pete. And I haven't looked that far ahead, but they, they would see, um, you know, in the next round. Houston. Uh, Houston. Which or is OKC. Defensive team. They're small. Oklahoma City's better defensively. Like, I don't see that as a roadblock. I think the Lakers, if they stay with this level that they're playing at now, are going to get to the conference finals, and then they'll see either the Clippers or the Jazz or Nuggets. Um, but right now, where they're at defensively, I'm waiting for a team to come up with a great or a better offensive game plan um, that attacks them inside a little bit more and then kicks out. You know, the thing with the Blazers is, is they attack from the outside in. Basically, they start with the perimeter. Um, they tried to establish Nurkic last night a little bit, but, you know, he got a little bit going, but just not enough. And so I think a team that can play in the paint a little bit more than Portland is will give them more problems. But, again, um, they were the number one defensive team in the league all year, and, and it's showing right now. You know, we had George Carl on yesterday, and, and he was talking about how it's not really NBA basketball. It's – it's something a little different. Uh, do, do you see it as, as that? Uh, do you think bubble basketball feels like uh, the real NBA playoffs, or uh, does it feel like something a little different? Uh, the Lakers are playing great defense, like we've been saying, but, but overall there seems to be just a great deal of scoring and a lot less of the lockup playoff defense that we see. Well, I kind of had a feeling that shooting percentages would go up in this environment, in that arena. I called that before this even started, and I think it's coming to fruition where you're getting guys making more shots because of um, the the depth perception and the sight lines and just being easier to shoot in that arena. Um, In terms of being NBA basketball, I mean, I think the level and the strategy and the competitiveness is NBA basketball. I think what he's probably referring to is the crowds and the emotion and the passion that that brings to the game. And the one thing I think you're seeing is like a team gets down 0-2, now you have to go back to their place and how much the crowd helps them in that game three scenario or game four scenario. And you just don't have that. So yeah, that's different. But I think across the board, everybody I've talked to and things I've read is like the level of play is, is 
where it always is. And the guys are competing, guys are making shots, guys are defending. It's just you miss um, the, the drama, I guess, of, of, of full arenas and crowds and home crowds and that kind of thing. Do you think the schedule, Don, just last thing real quick, is, is affecting them? The fact that they're playing these games at 10.30 a.m. at noon? I mean, or have they been in that bubble long enough that that doesn't – your body clock doesn't need an evening game to feel like it's time to play basketball? It's a good point, and we've speculated for years, and it's always been a case-by-case basis of guys who like the 12.30 game in a normal situation, guys who hate it for the most part. I think guys hate it. Um, but it is what it is. And if you're in the Eastern Conference, you're playing earlier because, you know, the time change. Um, luckily, the Clippers and Lakers are going to have mostly 9 p.m. Eastern time games. But I think, yeah, players, even though I'm sure their routines have changed since they've been in the bubble, um, I think they still prefer playing later. I don't think guys are going to bed at 9 p.m. and getting up at 6 a.m. to work out and all that. Maybe some guys are. But I just think in general, players prefer to play later. Um, but if you want to win, you got to adjust. And I think teams, especially in the East, are, are getting adjusted to that. It's great basketball information from our number one basketball guy and our BFF, the great Don McClain. There is only one. You can check him out on Prime Ticket tonight as the Clippers yeah, take it. Yeah, do you still have that warm-up, by the way? That is a freaking sweet-ass warm-up that's on the, the Zoom behind me. I, they give you a trunk, or they, they used to. They give you a trunk when you graduate from UCLA with all your stuff, practice gear, uniforms, sweats. So I'm pretty sure I have that somewhere. Nice. I might bust it out for you guys at some point. We do another one of these Zoom calls. Yeah, next week. <laughs> you have your jacket from your locker room after the last game, football style. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sneak okay. it out. There he is, Don. Smoking Yule Brenner from the oh, yeah. West World. Yeah! <laughs> Cyborg McLean with his fake hip. Don, we love you. Thank you so much. And we'll talk to you next week. There he goes, the great Don McLean. Matt, we still have many prizes to give away on AM570 LA Sports. All the things that you've been waiting for will be given away during this break. We only have about 40 more minutes of the second to last PMS. Chevy Virtual Summer Tour. TV. We're giving away the TV in the next break. Yeah, so and then the $1,000 gift card during the Dead and Alive or something. We'll hold off the keyword on a piece of paper during but, the but final But right segment. now right is now, another shoe. Five pair of Vans. Another shoe blowout. Five pairs of Vans, a big thank you to the great Don McClain, the BFF of the Petros and Money Show. But right now, on our Western PMS Chevy Summer Tour, virtually, we are giving away five of the beautiful pairs of PMS Signature Vans. You call 866-987-2570, and the, the, the key word is uh, Coach, uh, Mr. Van Doren's favorite uh, number one friend, the reason he listens to the show. High school football legend from Bosco and Diamond Bar, Coach Roach. Coach Roach. Coach Roach. That's why he's called Coach Roach, because he just would scoop up all the roaches that were scattered around the football it, field. And Roach just smoke to them. smoke them all the Had that roach clip with that sweet-ass feather. 866-987-2575. Pair to give away. Cates, are we going to put Don McClain back on next week if he finds that warm-up, as he said at the end of the interview, and we throws might have it on? To. We might have to double up. It depends on what's going on with the NBA playoffs. But uh, you give us right. a call right now, Coach Roach. Uh, five of y'all, if you talk to Colin, and then don't bother me. Like, oh, it's been a month and I haven't got a call. We'll get to you, Oats. Give all it right? three months. If they still Coming haven't from arrived. China. You know what? Give it four months. If they still don't show up after four months, then reach out. Yeah. yeah. The, the shoes will get to you faster than, uh, than the How COVID. How about give it till 2021? COVID, COVID spread across the globe faster than the shoes yeah. will. 2021, if you still don't have them vans, then let us know. Otherwise, eh, just wait it out. They're, 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 look, they're being... What else do you have to do? Right. I mean, where are you going to go in them shoes? Go buy another You pair ain't of got vans. nowhere to be. You ain't got no friends. Exactly you ain't got no right. job. Exactly right. Uh, all right. So, uh, 866-987-2-575 pairs of vans. Next segment, house. TV... After that, 
thousand dollar gift card for barbecues galore for your chuck wagon. Uh oh, Stu, unfortunately, only here for Ronnie's weekend. That was yesterday, Stu. Actually, that was uh, you missed it. That was yesterday. Appreciate the comment. Took there. the dogs out. Yeah, that's right. You can podcast oh, that on iHeartRadio from, from the first hour yesterday. As a matter of fact, that is up at iHeartRadio.com. Podcast that. You'll hear all about Ronnie's weekend uh, yesterday and what he was doing. Took the dogs out. Uh, went in the pool. Watched basketball. A lot of basketball. He loves the bubble. He does. Loves the basketball bubble. So, um, use Uber Eats. Chinese. That's right. <laughs> China. The also, Chinese a, chicken. also a big part of the Western history. Chickety freaking China. The chi- Chinese people, big part of the Western history. Darn right. Okay. It's Tim Cage. Join me for Dodgers pregame tonight at 530 right after the show with first pitch at 640. Catch every game on your home of the Dodgers. AM 570 LA Sports. (laughs) This is Petros and Money. And who can forget about iHeartRadio's Grand in Your Hand program? Remember, a Grand in Your Hand still coming every single weekday from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. All you got to do is call, and then they call you back. Uh, text the 200, but it's a block call, but you got to answer. And then, you know, when you answer it, make sure you answer it, because one time they, they call the guy back, but that's not usually what they do. Once you've been to hell and back, there's not much left to fear. When the boogeyman goes to sleep at night, he checks under his bed for me. Have you ever wondered who Waldo's hiding from? Me. Not even the cougars of L.A. are enough to scare me. But if I get into an accident, I'm calling the boss. Sweet James. If you've been hurt, don't back down. Call Sweet James. For our variety of seasonings and recipes, check us out at chefmanito.com. It's not a true Mexican dish without Chef Manito, so bring out the chef in you. Well, big thank you for watching and being part of these tour stops. Uh, Without you watching, the success isn't there, and we can't keep doing it, and damn, are we having a good time. So thank you for participating. And now back to the Petros and Money Virtual Chevy Summer Tour.
out of them, dude? We've had a few people. I asked him, well, what was, was the code, the code word? word? I, was, well, I don't know. I, I remember. Should we put it in a marker? Or should we just say it and maybe give the people listening an opportunity? No, no. Can't do that. No, no, not our normal listeners. We can't honor them, the people that listen every day. No, no. No, you got to do it on the YouTube and the Facebook. It's a PMS virtual Chevy Summer Tour. Stop number seven on a Two Ed Mono Tuesday. Matt and I are together taking you all the way up to, well, the Morongo pregame show with Tim Cates. We got Dodgers. We got Giants tonight. That'll start at 530. And on our sister station, AM 1150, we have the Clippers. We just talked to the great Don McClain. One of our favorite people who gave us 20 minutes of great basketball content. That was awesome. Oh, great sports talk. Here it, it is, Cates. Did anybody know it? Did anybody figure it out, Cates? Oh, we got somebody figured it out, man. We did? Yeah. Oh, there it is, in case you so didn't. So we just try to give away five fans in the next break. We got the two big ones. If well, you're watching on YouTube, segment. if you're watching on YouTube in the next break, it is the TV, the television, 50 inch TV. You'll have to watch. On YouTube or Facebook in our final segment, which is our big, beefy 25-minute segment going into Morongo Casino Resort and Spa pregame with Tim K. Correct. That's how we say it now. That's exactly how we say it now. So that 25-minute segment in the middle of that, we're going to hold up a sign with the keyword or phrase, and that's going to be your ticket (laughs) to win the $1,000 gift card from Henrik and our friends over at Barbecues Galore, bbqgalore.com, not a barbecue aisle. A barbecue! Barbecue store. So that's how it's going to figure as Matt and I and our whole crew here. A big thank you. I figure you. there, partner. I'm a, well, I figure it like this. I reckon that uh, Ronnie Fascio has been a big help today. The great Tim Cates, our executive producer. The host of the Morongo Casino pregame show. We got Ricky. We have the newly engaged Matt from Irvine and Eric. We got Ronnie. We got Bobby. We got Ricky and Mike. No, no. We don't. What? No. Eric, Mike, and Ricky. Eric is FM bougie. We know Ricky down here from the fourth floor. He's an OG. And, of course, Matt recently engaged our social media maven, Ronnie Fascio and Tim Cates. We couldn't do it without him. Brian Blackmore and Blackmore, our— Blackmore, hit it. Get him, Blackmore, you skinny bitch. Hey, sugar shorts, get over here. And uh, our boss, Don Martin, of course, uh, who put our show together many many years ago, 14 years ago. And Dave Weiss, our promotions guy, who we shamed out of death. Just because we made fun of you once didn't mean we didn't want you to decorate the vi- the place anymore, Weiss. Yeah, it was in the middle of the show when you're wheeling in a freaking shoe cart and moving a surfboard for the ninth time. Yeah, we thought you were going to bring in a hobby horse or something. Exactly. Wanted a mule in here. You suck. Stacks of hay, bales of hay. Matt, you can Cacti. click right now if you want to win the Chevy. You can click at the bottom of the we screen. we got two more opportunities. Click the bottom of the screen. That takes you to the link to sign up to win the Chevy Silverado. Blow through the wall of hay in a Chevy Silverado. Oh, that'd be something. Oh, come on. One more finalist this week. One more finalist next week. And actually, we're going to give it away next week. We were just discussing the method in which we're going to give it away. Details still being we're worked We're going to drop the truck on your house like the Watchmen. Is that we're right? We're going to have Adri- uh, Adrian Bright uh, drop it. Or Vite. That's his name. Uh, you know, that, that SUV... It got busted up pretty good when it got dropped from the sky. Right, we'll see. We're going to give you tips. Still workshop. We're going to send tips. Still workshop. Uh, Matt, we got the Secret Textoso Rodeo Roundup real quick. Textoso line. Sold out to Chevy. Click the link and get a Chevy right at the bottom of the screen on Facebook or YouTube. If you're not there, idiot, go to am570lasports.com, keyword Chevy. Hey, P. My wife woke up this morning with a headache for the second day in a row. Got in the shower, and I, on the other hand, woke up feeling great. So as I usually do, I put on the PMS podcast, commenced getting ready for another day in COVID hell. She got out of the shower and grimaced and said, do you know how much Petros's voice helps my headache? My reply, she called me an idiot and went to work, and so begins another day (laughs) paradise. Uh, One more, Matt. Hey, P, thanks for putting the Bruce Springsteen in my heart. As I sing relentlessly in the kitchen and I make dinner, my girlfriend is loving it. Good news for Ryan and Rhino Music. She'll make me take singing lessons. Oh, good. If I ever want to sing in the house again. It was a teenage wedding <laughs> in the over. Now, this is Ryan. What would you like to learn? I want to learn to sing beautifully. Anything else? Never hear of a little tune called Darlington County. Me and old Wayne had visited a brothel. Wayne got burned by the gonorrhea. Is that right? The gonorrhea. 
I just got out <laughs> clean with the HPV. He got picked up at the end of the song for Statch. I've got to tell the girls that I'm a carrier. Uh, oh. Oh, one more, Matt. I drive for FedEx, and I'm in Whittier. I got some tennis balls to throw at Vic. Sack! Get over there! It's good. Vic's, he lost two at a moment. Today. Vic's got no problems with his undercarriage. That colon cancer's gone. Now you can just hammer Vic's whole sack with hammer some tennis. It. Yeah, he lost. Pepper it. Dinner rolls, tennis balls, whatever you want to throw at it. Oh, and Matt, remember I called you Gambit yesterday? Yeah. Idiot! The Gambit show of record. Matt's superpower, degenerate gambling. That's true. <laughs> like, you know what? <laughs> that, that reminds me. We got one more break. Left. Come on, man. We got one more segment left. Let's get we to the can't TV. Put TVG yeah, on we it. can. Let's put the TV. We'll be right back, but we're giving away the TV right, right now. now. Live from the AM570 LA Sports Studios in Burbank, this is Petros and Money. Yeah, Brett. What's up, Brett from Westinghouse? Westinghouse, Brett, thank you for the stack of TVs. Westinghouse, Brett, gave us a 50-inch TV. Dave Weiss won't give me one, even though I asked. <laughs> You're going to win it if you say the keyword. I feel like I deserve one of them TVs. Oh, I thought you were going to say, then it done put a fist in my... <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not talking about getting my ass fisted, Matt. That's not... You know, not the whole part of it. Just punched in the ass. That's all. Get your head out, on, Tate. Tate. Get you pull your head out of your ass. Jeez, with your poof up there. Yeah, right, with your poof tear, your freaking ploof on the back. Hey, Trevor Ploof. Here, here's my invitation to Kate's, Matt, right here. <laughs> yeah, Kate, how you like that? I look so stupid. So what should our Thank keyword you. be? <laughs> what should our keyword be to give away the 50-inch TV? What, Kate? That's you. What? No, you don't quit. You don't. All right, hold on. We got, uh, I got to get to Fairmount Park. Fairmount Park, thoroughbred, claiming. Hey, sweetie, uh, how was your day? We're on third. You know, just... Ready? We got, my wife is boss. This isn't the keyword. No, that is not the keyword. We got Toron. Are you talking about kitten. commenters? Talking about horses. Oh. We got Bella Down. <sighs> Sing, kitty, sing. Don't dally. Oh. Kind of don't like dilly don't dally. dally, huh? Don't dilly dally around. Pink for me. Let's go. Come on, let's go. Pink for me? Pink for me. All right, pink for me it is. Pink for me! What race is it? Where? Uh, it is the seventh at Fairmount Park. Keyword, pink for me! Pink for me. It's more, more of a key phrase for you bitches. Bing, bang, boom. 866-987-2570. Matt's horse, pink for me. Pink for me. Uh, is it a cart race? Because we got a cart race on right now, Matt, and it's humiliating to be on. It's humiliating. Yeah, the harnesses are a, a disaster. Although we did bet on one called Hit by a Bus. Yesterday, we did. And lost. Believe it or not, it didn't win. Well, either way... Uh, Come on and win that TV. Thank you, Brett. Exactly right. For man. being part of the show all these years and giving us all them TVs. I would love one of them TVs, Weiss. Every day I come home and my son, like Oliver, asks me, You're the best, did, did you bring the TV? And I'm like, no. No, Weiss didn't come through again because he's a batch. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, whatever. I'll, well, take, I'll a, take anything. You know, I'm not proud. Beautiful I'm not proud. Look at me. Uh, so, we love Westinghouse. Darn right we do. And we really appreciate what they do for us. Uh, and remember, stick around because we're giving away the $1,000 gift card. Is that a Westinghouse? This is a Westinghouse right here. With, uh, that we are on right now. With the door and us and the photos and the link. Okay. The fighting spirit is one we all share. Amanda Nunez wears hers with pride. From standing up for herself against the doubters to being the only woman in her MMA training gym. Amanda refused to let stereotypes get in her way, whether inside the octagon or out. Since 1925, we've proved that it doesn't matter where you come from, it matters what you're made of. Modelo, the official beer of UFC. You want to be a cowboy? You want to ride the range? Sign up now at am570lasports.com to win that Chevy. Keyword, Chevy. We give away a Chevy Silverado every PMS Chevy Summer Tour, and when the tour is on, 
it doubles your chances. You need to sign up to win this Chevy Silverado. Go to am570lasports.com, keyword Chevy. Chevrolet, find new roads. This is Petros and Money. today or with us you will ride trying to catch the devil's herd across these endless skies. Yippee-yay! Yippee-yay-o! Hey everyone, thanks again for having me on the Petros and Money virtual summer tour. Uh, I'm Terry with Photo Ops um, and this song is a song that I wrote about my wife. Um, anyway, uh, I know you guys are big Lebowski fans. Um, anyway, the song's called Kathleen. Uh, I wrote it a few years ago about my wife. Okay. From the AM570 LA Sports Studios in Burbank. This is Petros and Money. Live from the AM570 LA Sports Studios in Burbank. This is Petros and Money. many a slip between a cup and a lip. Cha! Long and I, Vic Petros and Money AM 570 LA Sports. Final segment of and our seventh and second to last Chevy Virtual Summer Tour. And we finally got a little bit of musical flavor. That? Thank you to Photo Ops. Love Photo Ops and the work they do. Great indie rock band playing a little love for the PMS. That's a fully functional employee Adam friend. And uh, love photo ops, a great indie rock band locally. And of course, Matt, we got the Clippers tonight and the Dodgers tonight. We do. Here, Dodgers, 6 p.m., Tim Cates. Actually, 6.40 p.m., Tim Cates with the Morongo Casino pregame at 5.30 in the very next segment. And then on the Patriot, right now, Adam Oslin doing pregame and then tip for the Clips Mavericks game. Pivotal game five with the series knotted at 2 2. AM 11.50, 6 o'clock tip. Pre-game happening right now with fully functional. Actually, he's not fully functional. Well, he he's having a rough time right now. Emotionally destroyed. But he's happy that Photo Ops just played because that's a really cool band that he really endorses. Yes. So that happened. Big thank you to Adam and the Photo Ops. I Hopefully Photo together. Ops can come back yeah. for another one or we can get some other performance because we only got one more of these, Matt. That's all we got. Next Tuesday, and we will see you next Tuesday like we saw you this Tuesday with our sweet Western theme. We've already thanked everybody, and we only have one more prize to give away as the the horse race that Matt Bet uh, has just gone off. But the prize we have to give away at the end is courtesy of our dear friend Henrik from Barbecues Galore, not just a barbecue aisle. A barbecue store. And it's a $1,000 gift card from Barbecues Galore. So stay tuned on YouTube and Facebook because we will hold up a sign with the keyword and then you call in at 800-866-987-2570. Uh, 
And uh, that's how you win the $1,000 gift card. How you win the truck is even more simple. At the bottom of the screen, there is a link. You click it, and you sign up to win the brand-new Chevy Silverado. And, Matt, we're going to give away the truck on Tuesday. Next week. A week Crazy. from today will be the giveaway. Our uh, final tour stop one week from today, 3 to 5.30, just like this, on a Tuesday. Theme to be determined. Really, the theme of the show is we're giving away a truck. That's it. But right now... Brought to you by El Himador Tequila. Did we win? No, I think we finished in last place. Oh, well, that's like, us. Legitimately. Well, you know, that's... Yeah, whatever. You know, that's on brand. That's what happens. That's on brand for us. That's what happens. You Spe- got to be ready to lose. Speaking of brands, El Himador Tequila. Delicious. 100% agave, 100% good vibes, drink 100% responsibly. Brings you the final hour fun fact. It's part in effect. It's the hour three. Fun facts. Fun well, facts. Western-themed fun facts all week long. Elmer... McCurdy robbed Ooh. a passenger train in 1911. Scoring train robber? Train robber. Scoring all the $46 instead of the thousands he thought was on board. In his getaway attempt, he was shot and killed by lawmen. See, even back then, $46 doesn't seem like a good amount to die no, for. No, and it was not. I don't know why, but his body was embalmed with an arsenic substance to preserve it. And when no one came to claim or pay the mortician for like, embalming the body. Like Vladimir Lenin? Kind of. Kinda, the mortician decided to sell it to a traveling carnival as a sideshow. And over the next 60 De- years. Dead train robber? Dead train robber. Actual dead body. Come check it out. Yeah, different time back then. Things well, entertain the people, you know? Well, look. You can go see Tutankhamen. You next know, what's the difference? You know, right? McCurdy make a trip, made a trip out to Southern California. The corpse made a brief appearance in the movie She Freak. They thought it was a dummy. He was then set up in the Hollywood Wax Museum, but they gave it up, citing parts of the ears broke off and it wasn't lifelike enough. But he's. We... They thought it was a wax doll. Then sold to Ed Lierch, owner of the Pike in Long Beach. Oh, come on. Where he put it on display. Right by the Cyclone Racer. And in 1976, during the filming of the $6 million man's episode, Carnival of Spies, a prop man went to move Elmer and his arm broke off, revealing bone and muscle tissue. Police were called immediately. He was taken to the coroner's office. That's a hell of a forensic. Right? The mystery was solved. They figured out. Where is he now? He is buried in his hometown of Guthrie, Oklahoma. But the Pike, $6 million man, Steve Austin. Nice. Oh, they figured that one out. Talk about solving a mystery. I got to say, I'm Greek, so we are no shame, no shamed nationality when it comes to preserved bodies. Sure. Every town has their own saint's preserved body. And I can't attest to that Elmer story. You, you you would have to be told that that used to be a living being. It ain't like the guy, the black dude that comes to life in the Like a Prayer video and starts making out with Madonna. Ain't He's, like that. It, no, because if those if these things came back to life, trust me, the village is running scared. <laughs> Looks like a pile of rocks with a face drawn on it. <laughs> Basically, bloated rocks. Exactly right, man. Quick hits! The PMS Quick Hits. Come make it quick, y'all. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, yeah. We had to cue Vic. It took a second. Uh, game five. Clippers Mavs tonight. tonight. Chris Stapps is out. So is Pat Beverly. Out. Both of them. For tonight's game, you can listen on AM 1150. Tip-off is at 6. Fully functional employee Adam is right on the edge. He didn't know what's going to happen next. He's he, right on the edge. Fresh shaving. That thing is down to the wood, and it is scary looking. His her? Yeah. Uh, the Lakers does not look stable. The Lakers are going to close out. Well, Matt, you made the bold They're prediction. Close I out. mean, you made the bold prediction. Yeah, the Blazers want to go home. They want to get the hell out of the bubble. Why prolong the inevitable? They got their ass kicked yesterday. The Lakers will finish them off tomorrow. And also because Dame Lillard likely not going to play because an MRI was inconclusive, but said he can't straighten out his right leg. So chances are down 3-1 to what looks like a juggernaut of a Laker team, Blazers. Going to just kind of walk through and make it a formality. Tomorrow, Lakers will advance to the second round. Well, that's your prediction. That's my prediction. And your predictions have been chef's kiss. I think I'm perfect, actually. Perfect. Chef's kiss. Yeah. Chef's kiss. Perfect. I believe I am over. Over. The, the NBA's 2019-2020 Defensive Player of the Year, Milwaukee's Yanis Antetokounmpo. <laughs> 
Anthony Davis finished a distant second. None to be ashamed of there. In the voting. Hey, finished second. Did all right, AD. We got the Dodgers tonight, Matt. And just like the Lakers, the Dodgers are on a roll, and they play in San Francisco tonight. First pitches at 645. We will have City of Hope Dodger pregame at a certain point. Yes, we will. In uh, probably about 10 minutes, not even 10 minutes, about nine minutes, we'll have that. Angels are playing in a doubleheader in Houston right now. Game tomorrow has been postponed because of Hurricane Laura bearing down on Southeast Texas. So they're going to get the hell out of Dodge. Damn See, because that's a Western theme. Get the hell out of Dodge. That's what they oh, would say because good. it was such a rough spot. They'd say, that's hey, man, you've got to get the hell out of Dodge. Uh-huh. Yeah, They're roughed up. Get out of Dodge. Marshall Dillon. Exactly right. They'll let man. you know what's going on. You ever think Marshall Dillon was, you know, with Kitty over there at the Long Branch? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You know what you're saying. You know, when Doc, that are watching when on the Doc went to bed, you know what I mean? The Long Branch. Because, you know, Dillon had a lot of fury. He had to kill a lot of men there in Dodge City. It ain't easy out there. No, it ain't. Get out of Dodge. Ooh, the harness race about to start. St- we, we're almost done. Did you talk about the Angels? I did. Okay, we got the Chargers, Matt. No fans allowed. No fans in attendance at games until further notice because of the coronavirus pandemic, but you can fly on out to Florida and be part of the 20%. Or you could fly on over SoFi Stadium, take a photo from the right side oh, of the plane, Lindsay post it to theory. your Instagram and feel good about yourself. Do it. How sweet does this look? I'll actually be there on Thursday for the Charger scrimmage. Well, you'll give us a full so report. I'll post some of those boomerang videos on my gram well, that Matt, you can check out. Yeah, you're not the only guy going out there. We're going to do the first challenge from there, okay? This thing looks amazing. I'm going to be I'm going to be out there with Fred, like Liz Habib and Jackie Slater. That'll be sweet. Oh, if by sweet you mean awful, then yes. It's going to be unreal. Um, Mike Williams, a wide receiver, not the one from USC, the one from the Chargers that Matt covers as the voice of the Bulls. Has a brain shoulder is week to week. Status for the season opener is not yet determined, but it could be a lot worse, I guess. And the international superstar no. in soccer, one of the most beloved athletes on earth, Lionel Messi from Argentina, the most famous Argentinian since Eva Perón and Jorge Borges, uh, has told FC Barcelona that he wants to leave the club. Where's he going to go? Speculation Don't is, be a speculation is Serie A. That he will join Italy? Cristiano Ronaldo in Serie A. That that likely will be that. A lot of people are getting a big bone for the idea that he could join United States great Christian Pulisic over there at Chelsea. Hey, wonder boy. That's what they're hoping. But uh, word is, Serie A may be where his services are procured. All right, and there is a little college football news. Penn State linebacker Micah Parsons, who's not going to play this year. Oregon tackle, Penny Sewell, and... Uh, they're among 11 players selected to the AP preseason All-America first team. They're not slated to play this fall. 12 second-team All-Americans will also not play in the fall, including Justin Fields from the defending Big Ten champions. Number two, Ohio I still got number State. two in the Heisman. Oh, on the way, at the end yeah, of the season. I got him in number I don't two. see any of these guys perform better than Justin Fields nah, did last year. He would have had a better season than any of these guys. No question about it. I'm a Justin commit. Fields guy. So. Defensive player of the year? That one guy. Played for that one team. Whoever it was. And they didn't play. Exactly. Michigan. You just, say, just say AJ Tufele. There you go, that guy. Uh, Matt, uh, we got the hand sanitizer from the Surf City Still Works, which they don't tell you to drink. But Surf City Still Works in, in beautiful Huntington Beach, they've got great spirits for everybody. They do everybody. a great job. Uh, not only are those spirits delicious, the bourbon... They have the rum, they have the gin, they have the vodka. Awesome spirits, but also beautiful bottles that you would be proud to put up on your bar for so the folks to look at. In your home, remember you can request them at your local pub or restaurant if you want. Just pick them up at their spot in Huntington Beach. SurfCitySteelWorks.com is where you would order. We also love their pre-mixed cocktails in a can. They got one, two with vodka, one with the bourbon, and one with the gin. All are delicious. Highly, highly recommended. Give it a look, by the way, just to put your eyes on how glorious the artwork is on those bottles. SurfCitySteelWorks.com Okay, Matt, your dead guy birthday of the day is a Jamaican news item today. It's Jamaican news! Die out there, Matt. Are you too, just die. Yeah, come on, God! Uh, Junior Delgado, Matt, uh, a.k.a. Oscar Hibbert, uh, 62 years old today. I think you would love this song, Matt. It's right up your alley when it comes to reggae. Born in Kingston, 1958. Died in South London in 2005. Junior Delgado was mentored by Dennis Brown. And you know what we say about Dennis Brown? Well, it took all. 
all the coke in town to, to take. bring down Dennis Brown. Damn right. He worked with every legend that you can think of in reggae's history. King Jammy, Augustus, Pablo, Lee Scratch Perry, who did this song, Sons of Slaves, which has always been one of my favorite Jamaican tunes. In 83, he did 18 months in Britain on a yak offense. Ooh. Yeah. Had a record band in London after a riot broke out over a murder. Well, you think that stuff is new? And uh, What are you, new? Yeah, what are you, new? Uh, last thing he really did was a Dennis Brown tribute album in 2001. And like I said, he died in his sleep in 2005. Survived by a wife and uh, seven kids. My no. wife! Junior Delgado. A lot guy, not necessarily the Wild West, not really country, but Jeff Tweedy certainly a lot closer to some of the great country singers oh. and some of that pop schlock BS that Kate's listens to. the crap to. Kate's listens exactly. to. Exactly. So happy For 53rd sure. to the former co-founder of Uncle Tupelo and founder and frontman of Wilco. Hit it, Kate. No depression. Love war on war. Love Wilco. Happy 53rd. So does Winona Ryder. Born in Southern Illinois. Tweedy love country. Uh, That's a place you got caught publicly urinating, Matt. J- yes, exactly right. Jay Farrar, his bestie in high school. Uh, Tweedy was in a country. Farrar was punk rock kid. They both went to SIU Edwardsville, not Saluki, sadly. Still can't pee in not the street. Carbondale. You still can't pee in no, the street. probably not in Edwardsville either. First band, Rockabilly called the Plebes, won a battle of the bands, renamed it the Primitives, then realized there were some people in the UK named the Primitives. Here we go, way too, too fast. fast. Don't Come slow down, you're going to stop it. So they renamed their band Uncle Tupelo in 86, dropped out of college, worked at a music store, played around St. Louis, did a demo in 89, deal with Giant Records, pretty much launched the alt-country scene. Yeah, they did, Matt. Started pumping out records. It wasn't the drive-by truckers. No, same time. I think the two of them kind of concurrently you... what? were doing it. Who? Patterson Hood. And... I mean, you're either going to be a Tesla guy or a Marconi yeah. guy. You know, you're either an Edison or a, you know, come on. But they, um, well, Farrar got tired of <clears throat> Tweety's drinking and uh, and drugging and decided now, to life on the road, man. break up the band without telling them. And uh, that was that. The For first, Uncle Tupelo. The first Sunvolt record was way better than Wilco's debut AM. And a lot of people thought that Sunvolt was going to be the one that took Sunvolt, off. Sunvolt the band? Sunvolt wait, the wait, band. Uncle Tupelo, then Sunvolt, then Wilco? Sunvolt. When you broke up, Farrar took half of the Uncle Tupelo and made Sunvolt. Tweety took the other half and made Wilco. They're both still F-U, going. F you, you're cool. Uh, Just a real Dave Mason, Win- Steve Winwood exactly situation. Right. Just I'll wrap it up by saying... Uh, Yankee Hotel Foxtrot is their seminal record. Regularly cited as one of the best of the decade and one you ought to listen to. Heavy metal drummers on there as well that I think everybody knows from Wilco. So uh, check that out. Happy birthday, Jeff Tweedy. Everybody knows that Wilco. Right? <laughs> <laughs> right, Ricky? <laughs> Matt? We Eric? know it. Yeah, Wilco. We, we know Wilco. Not FM Eric up there. Oh, he definitely Listening knows. to Ariana you know Grande What's and that, Big Aaron? Sean's duet. Oh, he said he's a Sunbolt guy. Won't listen to a licka. Well, he was. I'm on side for our. Sorry, I ain't gonna listen to any Wilco. That's what Eric just said. I thought he was a real estate guy. <laughs> Not Sunny Day real estate. Well, that the would be other sweet band. Too. City of Hope Dodger pregame. Let's go. Let's go. Oh, we got it. Wait, 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 wait. Kill it. Kill it. Thank you, Ronnie. Sorry about that. We need to give away the $1,000 gift card to Barbecues Galore, not just the Barbecue Aisle. A barbecue store. Check out all the stores, including the Marketplace and Irvine store. Think, Matt. Think oh. hard. Use your brain. You know what? Another great Wilco song that everybody knows. Get on YouTube and Facebook right now and look at the screen. We, we hold up this sign, which is Wilco related. That's the one everybody knows. Everybody knows this song. <laughs> 866. This is Eric's favorite. 987 2570. 866 987 570. That's going to win you a $1,000 gift card to Barbecues Galore. That'll buy you a big ticket item of your choice. A Weber, a Turbo Gas Grill, a Big Green Egg, a Green Mountain Pellet Grill like you don't Tim Case has. Don't want to miss that. So 866-987-2570. Put you on the level with Joe Davis. If you were on YouTube or Facebook, you know what the keyword is. <laughs> a great song by Wilco that everybody knows. Let's go. City Let's Hope. go. Batter up. Batter up. Hope physicians and researchers relentlessly working together, turning powerful science into life-saving new cancer treatments. Learn more at cityofhope.org. The Dodgers are good. The Giants. 
Dodgers have won 11 of 12. Giants, how about that? They've won six in a row. Whatever, they suck. They're still eight games back in the NL West. First pitch tonight, 6.45 p.m. That, that hat fits you good. It fits you good. It just, I have such a tiny head. Does it make it look smaller? No, no, it makes uh, it, it, it's it's a good look. It and your new really surfing good. shoulders. <laughs> you, I'm seriously. You know, Matt. my wife, she's been buying me these shirts. She said I got large production. <laughs> That's what I, I mean, Matt, like. look, I see you riding on the range far away from me. That's a formidable man. <laughs> That's a man that I think is going to. He's got some sugar. He's going to lay the puzzo down. Mm. Julio Urias. Johnny Cueto in the pitching matchup. Thank you for the AM570 LA Sports. One thing the Petros and Money Show truly enjoys is a little bit back. Dodgers on deck with Tim Case. Good night.